like I'm logging you that uh, 23. <laughs> Twenty-four, twenty-three. The problem is actually you are, we have no schedule for you today. There's a link. Huh? Yes, I'm 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 gonna log the room, but actually there was no schedule. Oh, yeah. Twenty nineteen. Oh yes, you have the recording and um. Okay, what's up? Oh, okay, so just wait a minute. I just have to log into the meeting. Meeting info. <laughs> yeah, at first that and uh, then after. So the room has been called now. And this starting. Did you see anything? I have nothing on my camera. You're missing the video, okay. Uh, recording was automatic, so the recording just started.
table of the twelve apostles to receive the great apostles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before you, Great. And I'll point out we have a very rich discussion of the summary of the on the side. On the side. We can make it easier to come to the conclusion. We have a rich discussion of the digital contact. The patient comes out. And we have some very this was on site and on this will be included in the secretary is also taking note of the improvement suggestions that are in Suggested among others, the main three key messages involve broad media. The seven will then introduce the uh, six working groups, the agenda. In the session of working meeting, collaborated on the other points and sub themes. The summary document will soon be made available in the planning for the idea of program I mean, the idea of program meeting. We also invited nine stakeholders to provide updates on the internet, the internet governance process and initiative. Among others, the stakeholders are chaired by the Yale presences. Also, I think uh, point in time. Be taking action points consideration for how we set up sessions through the workshop. Uh, thank you. Just have a moment to share my screen. So, Apologies, there just seems to be an issue with the display. Uh, since we all have computers, you can also go to the web soon.
Donc, du coup, qu'est-ce qu'on
stronger. I was struggling with this uh, this question for uh, all of the three years uh, that uh, I spent uh, in the position of chairman of NATO military committee in an effort to bring uh, uh, you and NATO. Everyone? People cannot hear in the. That in was my question. And yeah. also, what reminds a very clean voice about. And then, told that we can. But can you have a look?
Uh, yeah, I just yeah, you're right. Pindipo, yeah, incorrect incorrect presentation source. I'm I'm connecting, yeah, yeah. On the Webex? Did you hear me when I talk? No? Ouais, 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 je suis sur Webex, j'ai allumé la vidéo aussi. Est-ce que tu ombres au niveau Au niveau de la salle, tu vois ça uh, uh, From Africa, uh, Africa in particular, because it would be good, I, good, good to see how uh, IGF is growing in terms of the representation um, of the sessions and how many of those newcomer sessions, then we can see how many of the newcomer sessions end up uh, being selected. That, that was number one. Number two, I think we may also need to consider having some kind of consensus um, and direction in terms of the criteria for evaluation, uh, because uh, from d discussing uh, during the breaks with uh, fellow MAG members, uh, it seems that the main cutoff point was the score. And if we take the main cutoff point on the score, it depends on ourselves when we're doing the scoring uh, what sort of influence or bias do we have because the first initial thing is people asking do you know any of the speakers so maybe people are more comfortable with people they know or they've heard of but people who ha haven't been heard of may end up getting a lower score uh, so maybe there should be another option of making sure that even the low score, uh, the sessions that you know get a lower score, what additional criteria can be put for them to be uh, to 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 be considered, uh, so that it can be we can be more inclusive. And then finally, uh, having some sort of I said it earlier, having some sort of capacity building uh, for those groups that kind of are on the on the lower end. Thank you. Sorry, my button seems to be stuck all the time. Um, thank you very much, uh, Nema. Um, just um, that is an issue, and that is one of the things that we are trying to encourage, um, having people from underrepresented and also developing country. I mean, they may have all sorts of issues that they may not have that network that supports them, that they can help, and also it could be language issues, et cetera. But if I'm not mistaken, um, in the workshop evaluation form, there is points for newcomers. So that is baked into the evaluation yeah, but criteria. Place, some have not filled it up. We didn't get that information in some of the forms. That's the issue. So uh, we don't know. Some people did not, the workshop session people did not fill up whether or not they were newcomers or not. Um, I suppose we could make it mandatory. That will be fine, but peace, please. Your, um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, peace for record. Uh, MAG member civil society. I, I thought I should just add this because we're talking about the information about them being new, not being mandatory, but also the gender. When you're looking at diversity, you want to know the genders of these other organizers, the speakers, and the rest, but some of them were not there. So that means we should make it uh, mandatory so that we are able to know. So it was, it was difficult for some cases, you can just totally not a, uh, possible to know the, that. So it should be mandatory, I think. 
Yes, uh, I don't think it's an issue making that mandatory. As a personal aside, that can easily be gamed as well. If I'm doing a workshop, I will get which profile I think would go into, uh, would give me more points. But yes, uh, we can make it. Um, I think at times, since I still have the mic, can I just add something? Sure. Maybe it's taking us away from the discussion, but I think uh, we need to think about having gender as a main session. Yes, yeah, because that was a major discussion last meeting, and we are going to be opening up the main session discussion in the afternoon as well. Oh, so that thank can, you. We can um, hold that until then. Uh, sorry, Bruna. Thank you. Now, just on the gender thing, still like looking just at the kind of the titles for the sessions, we have more or less three or four gender related sessions just looking at the titles and we're back at the issue we were at last year in which we had two or three tops and again at the beginning of the year we made a compromise of making gender an overarching issue for this year's igf um, both gender and the sustainability so i don't know whether we're going to look back at the list and revisit them like and see whether we can pull like one or two more session suggestions, proposals um, back to the final list. But I would maybe maybe suggest that we do it more or less because just for it's not enough. And going back to the town hall question, um, is it possible for us to double check the list and see if there's a, there isn't any kind of like overlapping conversation between our provisional final list of approved workshops and the town halls um, one because I, for instance, agree with Adam that um, some need to be like more properly um, evaluated in that sense, and we shouldn't just necessarily go with the, the provisional list. And just to put on the record that I also support the main session on gender, as obviously you guys might have been expecting from me. So that's all. <laughs> um, so Uh, uh, there's three gendered. You found three gender uh, four, uh, and the and you think that there should be more in the uh, program because we have agreed that gender is one of the cross-cutting themes that should happen, and we should the groups should revisit the selections and see whether or not more workshops with gender as the main um, uh, theme should be put, can be put into the program. Okay, well, that's a mag decision and a chair's decision. <laughs> I mean, just referring back to last year's process, we did the same at, actually, so. Yeah, yeah um, as in, we would like people to revisit, um, but, there has to be some value which the session brings to the table, not because of tokenism, as in that is something which is important. Uh, so let's keep that in mind also. Yeah, I was keeping my um, comments minimal, uh, minimal and just asking if there's calls from, if this is a good idea, you don't think so, what are the points of view? Amrita, for the record, Chengitai. Another thing, perhaps if um, building upon from what Nima said, um, it may take some time, but if the Secretariat could look at the shortlisted sessions and kind of give us how many are first timers or, you know, um, some places we've tried to give from which region it has come. Um, and obviously, the gender ones can be highlighted. It'll help people also to reflect back because that uh, since you know we've just pro uh, shared our 10 11 sessions if that kind of information comes uh, perhaps even for the igf secretariat and mag to go back and to the community and say look we selected these many first time proposals this time it uh, you know we can uh, i think that analysis those metrics can help us also 
No, I totally agree with you that we should do some sort of analysis on the selected workshops to see where the spread lies um, on all the metrics, geographical, gender, the whole lot. Uh, the same as we did to the, with the overall. And yes, we can do that. It will not probably be ready this week uh, because we have this whole week, but it will be ready as soon as possible. It might be ready this week, in fact, but we'll see. No promises. <laughs> Look at it. They are pretty different because if we are looking at the proposals, if there are three proposals, um, people who are veterans, I would say, have given proposals from three continents. Uh, so it, it's very, you know, uh, you can game the process. Well, yes, that's what I'm saying. That, that the process is can be gamed, and it's difficult to put in uh, those checks that will stop this gaming. But I, I agree with you that um, uh, overall analysis would be a good idea just to see that the selected workshops are a reflection of the global nature of the IGF and also what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, so, yes, the Secretariat will work on that, and as soon as it's ready, we will share it. I've not, I have no idea what the time is and what can be done automated. I mean, the regional and stuff like that, that's automated. I mean, that's a click of a button. It's an SQL query. So, just the first timers, if that can help, then, you know, we can process even now within ourselves, we can kind of see if we can uplift a bit more. Yes, we'll work on it. I think the, I don't know which is, uh, um, Lewis can just look at the problem and also Eleanor and Celine and just to see what format is the best way um, to do it in. Um, but yes, I mean, that can be done. That's, uh, we can, but we still have that, proposal that you made and that Bruna made, do we have any body for or against supporters, distractors? Uh, I mean, it was a proposal that was made to the MAG. Um, what do you think of it? <laughs> and again, uh, I'll keep quiet now. Adam, if I can come in on that, because mm. mm. that's why I had my flag up, was, yes. yeah, mm. Um, I really don't want to be mansplaining about this. I've been um, very supportive of having gender as cross-cutting and was in Vienna. Um, uh, and I don't think we emphasized it enough in our proposal process, but that was just my opinion at the time. Um, but just tell us what to do, because I don't, you know, what do you want us to do? Write it down and then we will follow the lead but i'm not going to sit here as a rather gray-haired old white man telling you what to do on this issue because i don't think that's appropriate if that's all right with you um i'd like to go back briefly to town halls and all the discussion about workshops uh, sorry to go on about this but i'm going to anyway um i just had a look at uh, one of the town halls i recognized it because it was a workshop proposal that in one of the group one of the groups that i was working on did an evaluation their workshop proposal did not get through unfortunately it was good but there you go um, they have a town hall which is on the same subject why why would we let that go through when they've had a workshop that's been through the process on the same people same topic and they i mean this is the problem here and I think we can free up some spaces for more workshops or to not free up some spaces That's fine you know or to not free up some spaces so that we don't have a less complicated agenda but which we all always talk about. But okay I have a proposal why don't we uh, between now and three if that's enough time uh, we'll distribute the link um, you can take a look at it uh, we can have a Google Doc in the, uh, this is just a suggestion, please, if you want to refine it, uh, please say it. We can, we can have a Google Doc, which the link will be sent to the MAG private list. Work sh um, uh, town halls, which you think should not be there, you can just add them, and then we can have a discussion when we come back at three uh, to see what's on it. Would that be okay? Yeah, okay. Bruna. Uh. Just on two things, town halls, um, because it's difficult, right, for us to come in and say, I don't think um, Adam's proposal should come in, but 
Looking at the list, I've seen a few in which there is no information about speakers or gender like parity or stakeholder diversity or like suggestions in which there is only the organizing that, that's being listed as a speaker. So that might be up for some criteria or like a further look. And on the gender thing, maybe to get it more concrete as a proposal, uh, my suggestion would be for each of the groups um, to take a look at both sub teams they evaluated and see whether there is at least one proposal we can bring in to kind of a promotion kind of list. So at least one per sub team. I think it's it's the minimum kind of compromise we can do for now because I see a lot of discussions on child protection, which is awesome. We need it, but I don't see enough on gender, not even in the human rights one. So that's a little bit concerning for me. So we have one. I know, yeah. Um, <laughs> Just to, and I will ask Celine and Eleonora to um, correct me if I'm wrong. The list of town halls that you see, they are not accepted in any way. They are just the ones that were not automatically eliminated when the secretariat went through. So, um, it, so eliminating, um, this is a wild number, I'm just thinking eliminating 15 of those will not free up 15 slots. Eliminating 15 will maybe not free up any because uh, we wait for the workshops and then we add the rest. I don't know if there's, yeah. So that's just uh, uh, to manage expectations of this thing that we're doing right now. Um, those ones are not automatically taking place, yeah. Yes. Uh, Justin, for the record, uh, in support of Bruna's uh, point to, uh, for groups to go back and review their proposals, but speaking for human rights, uh, we went through the same criteria because we realized that uh, there were none on gender. So we uh, reviewed again, and so we were able to score the ones that we thought did not just tick the gender box, but also contributed value to the to the session. Yes. And Chengita, the ask, if I may, uh, you know, re, kind of reword it is that it, it is a request for the working groups to go back and look if they feel there is a proposal which they could review, which has some amount of gender being discussed, if they would want to relook and bring it back. As in, we are not pushing people to do it, but many may not have looked at it from that criteria. And if they want to, it would be good. Okay, you've heard Amrita. Um, again, yes. Gender is important, but we have to balance it, as you say of saying, look at it, see if it, um enhances the overall program or that track etc it is not the only um criteria it's an important criteria but it should not be the only criteria um i know adam wants me to make the decision but <laughs> yes carol <laughs> Okay, good, now it's on. Right. So, on the form where we are allowed to make recommendations to the proposers, we're wondering if they see those things and how do we ensure that they um, adjust what is required. Um, so, for example, the agenda um, issue. So, we would want them to revisit the agenda um, sorry, the gender as well. There was some, um, I think, with regards to um, being more diverse in terms of the regions um, that they they selected. So, how do we know for sure, or how do we get back to the proposals and say, "Hey, this is contingent on you doing this." 
I'm sorry, I, I, um, I'm going to answer your question, even though I may not have fully understood it. Um, we do have conditional acceptance, right? That if you fix this, then your thing will be accepted. Um, the merits and whether or not it is fair to um, boost other workshops uh, because of this dimension that they have, I, I think that's up to the groups. Uh, um, the groups are the ones that will select the workshops and um, that's your list. I mean, <laughs> scores are the guiding. It's that is basically one of the main tasks of the MAG to go through the workshop list and say, these are the workshops that we want. Um, we've had arguments for um, the criteria's pieces group did a fantastic job on the evaluation. It wasn't an easy task at all. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> You wouldn't like member. Uh, we made we we put a condition for two workshops. So I think if the other groups feel that uh, it's necessary to have uh, to make an improvement for the other workshops, I think it can be done. Yeah. And uh, it's not really an issue. We would help the organizers to. To, and to tell them that uh, these are the conditions that uh, you have to do if you want to be accepted uh, for the workshops. Yeah. Shingatai, uh, peace uh, for record. I don't know if you got uh, back to Carol's. I think it's very important. Okay, so I think it's very important that the session organizers are getting feedback from us. Yes. Do they get the feedback? Was that, did you say yes? Um, sorry, I've been too, too many uh, permutations of this, but I'll ask. Okay. Because I think it's Answer very that. important for them to improve. Yeah, for them to improve the next time they are applying, Eleonora? Yes, just, just to answer quickly, um, the feedback that MAG members have given during evaluation are shared with the proposers, all the proposers. Thank you. Yes, please. So how do we know their responses? I mean, or there are actions towards the feedback. How do we? I mean, are you doing a conditional um, acceptance? Mm -hmm. uh, we had four hundred um, rounded up. Uh, we had four hundred submissions. Um, that's why um, it's basically the affirmative action debates that we're having here. <laughs> I don't want to make any uh, tell you guys what to do. Um, it's up to your individual groups. Um, but if you have a conditional acceptance, I'm just telling you just the format. Uh, if we have a conditional acceptance, if we give them a time limit, they change it, and then we can send it back to you and you can look at it. Or if it's a simple conditional acceptance, the secretariat can take care of it and except uh, that's um, how we do it. Uh, Joyce, you had a, mm -hmm. is that it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, Bruna. Mm -hmm. Just, I think we have two questions on the table, maybe. The first one is whether everybody's gonna look at their lists and see if any other panels can be boosted. Um, I think we have already kind of identified that there is at least three groups with one gender um, approved or pre-approved workshop. I think it's AI, um, divides and um, human rights, but the rest, they don't have any, not from reading the, the kind of the, the title of the session. So there is one question. The second one is whether we wanna add um, something provisional to 
like and conditional to to the to the approval like are we actually asking the organizers to say can you bring in some gender lenses to this workshop is this going to work because i think we have these two questions and we need to decide like which of them are we actually going to take on i'm not advocating for <laughs> any of them specifically but i think we need to decide so yeah Uh, th thank you. I, I just wanted to add uh, two things. One, I think it would also be good to have a clear understanding of uh, sessions from hosts of from host country, because one of the things we did in the human rights group, uh, sorry, the under under the DC part, we made a deliberate effort to to look at the the, the sessions that were being proposed from Japan itself. So I think that's also an important thing that we should also consider being that Japan is the host country. Um, so that that should also be something we look at all the different themes. Do we have, was there an application? Is there a possibility uh, for consideration, etc.? Then number two, the other thing that we noted was uh, maybe something that can also be considered for future is some of the sessions were being submitted as maybe from Africa but in actual sense, it was not from Africa. Like people from the global north were just rerouting it and making it be like from Africa because they know it. maybe they'll get a better consideration and they'll get a higher score. So I think we also need to look at that dynamic because that's something that we also noted. Thank you. Amrita. Changita, to respond to your question and what Bruna raised, um perhaps when the sessions are you know the letter goes to the sessions which have been shortlisted or you know the provisional obviously has some con other condition there could be a line saying that it would be good if possible to have um to look at the issue even from gender lens if possible i know it's very last moment but if we could add it um, because people change speakers right at the drop of the hat sometimes what we see written and what the actual session is completely different we have also witnessed that so um perhaps if we can just sensitize that while this is looking at uh, this in case there is a possibility to also look at it from a gender lens uh, it would be um appreciated or something it's not mandatory as in just telling them think about that also that's only one way i can look at it if mag doesn't want to revisit the proposals uh, no i mean we can when we send the acceptance we can have a general statement saying uh, we are encouraged to also consider the gender perspective of whichever topic you're talking about that's i don't think that's much of a problem and if that would satisfy you then let's go with that i think that's the easiest way of doing it instead of um uh rejigging this a stated system um we can just state we can just um add that sentence mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yes please Yes, um, I would um, uh, allergy, um, a MAC member. I would agree with that um, because, you know, what we have already is a scientific evidence. So and I mm. think we need to go with that. However, for example, if you allow us maybe one or two more to be added, because there are some very good ones, but maybe they are lacking, you know, diversity or they're lacking, you know, certain, certain things. Maybe we can use those ones as a conditional acceptance that they have to go back and then correct those for them to be accepted. But the way it is right now, based on the scientific evidence, I think we should leave it, leave it the way it is. Okay. Uh, and just to be clear, on this list, I said, you know, to me, these seem reasonable, your plus ones and plus twos and threes, but we have to go back to the schedule and see if they can be fit. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I am of the hope that we can. So just making that clear. Uh, Bruna? Mm. Just so we, we speak on more practical terms, is there any chance we can put all the four lists together? And see how many we have overall, just so we can address like how much space do we still have to include anything or 
take anything out because again we're still not getting the answer to my question like we we don't know whether are we going to look at the list are we not going to look at the list are we going to add anything or we we don't know it um we yeah i mean it's it's an art <laughs> and it's not something that's very easily done and um it takes quite some time to have the full schedule because we have, you know, uh, sessions for an hour. We have sessions for 90 minutes. We have 30 minute sessions. Um, so that does take some time. Um, th that's why we have um, these um, yellow zone um, workshops as well, that if we have space, then uh, we can add it. And this is where probably these plus ones and plus threes and et cetera will go into it. But it does take some time. And then also, we also have this thing about um, sessions in different tracks should not, um, if possible, be done at the same time. So we can't have, you know, the cybersecurity, all the cybersecurity sessions happening at the same time. They have to be spread out. So it really does take a lot of, um, I don't know, mathematics, we call it the transport technique. I don't know why it's transport, but yeah, <laughs> to do the, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but let's agree on that, that for the, for the accepted workshops, we will have that line uh imploring them to also include the gender uh perspective w w within their workshops um as much as possible yeah mm. Mm. sorry to be repetitive about this but we're not going to look at the list then you will get a list no 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 i'm not saying that Chinga time i'm saying like we can put all the four provisional lists together. I'm doing it now. Yeah, yeah. And then see how many gender related we have on this. Oh, yes, yes. List. I did say at the very beginning that yeah. we are going to put all the lists together. We're going to do the, run the statistics, the same statistics we had done with the um, uh, main, but, uh, with, with, with all the lists. That's going to be done. Yeah. I just said I didn't know how long it was going to take. I said that it's a database, so it should be easy, but I don't know. But as soon as we've done it, we'll share it. I just want to know what's our next text, like task. Like, are we going to look further and have one additional added as a suggestion to the brother list, gender ones? As far it's, as yeah. I am hearing, what we're going to do now is that we're going to consolidate the list. We're going to run the statistics on the list after this meeting next week sometime. For those accepted workshops, we are going to send the acceptance out. We are going to have a um, line or a paragraph there asking them that for their topic that has been selected, that we are encouraging them to, uh, uh, these are just words, um, these are not the exact words, to also examine the gender perspective in that session. Um, so no additional as well. The only additional that I am um, expecting is the additional if the AI and emerging technologies have one or two must have additionals, but I take it when they looked at it, they didn't maybe there isn't so that's fine um Chengita, yes Amrita I mean, here i think what bruna is requesting yes apart from this what you said isn't that is an agreed thing yes is that she's requesting if the groups may want to revisit their lists once just in case they want to kind of have a gender uh, thing they're that's free the only to do thing. that i think which is okay with you right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they're, they're so free bruna, to take a look but um well i'm as i said i'm not mandating anything um, and uh, there's so many uh, things, it's mainly dealing within the discussion within the group. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, if you want to do anything, but 
the deadline, I mean, next week, that's when we're going to start because it's, it is getting rather. No, as in we are saying now, if they want to yeah, yeah, look and tell it by today, that's, do that, make that's what we're saying, nothing else. We've, we've heard the feedback, and they, but I mean, that's the reason why we had these presentations. You've heard the feedback, and the groups can now look at the list and see whether or not they want to make any um, adjustments. And then that's fine. Uh, that, that, that's why we're having this feedback period. Will the uh, people Adam, be informed? What is the timeline for informing the workshop proposals? We want to do that next week if we can. Um, because, as I said, you know, um, it's in October. People need to know if they're going. People need to know whether they need to have um, book their tickets and stuff like that. Uh, we, we're really on a tight schedule now, um, as of previous years when we were in November or December. Uh, we're in the beginning of October. Adam. Thanks, Changatai. Um, yeah, I, I'm a little hesitant to mention this because it might be more work for you and the Secretariat. So if it's horrible suggestion ignore it but um one thing we did ask as the mag when we were you know looking at the new proposal process for this year that we saw the name of the organizers of the session those who were proposing the session and and that didn't happen i wonder would it be possible to make that information available now for the workshops that have been provisionally accepted um, so that it may help with some of the concerns about whether it was from a particular region, which organization it was, perhaps we may have some duplication with multiple organizations. Anyway, um, if it's not too much work, because I don't think it's fair, given all the things we're asking you to do, to add to more than that. So with that caveat, would it be possible to do that? Um, the other thing is that we also quite, you know, we spent quite a lot of time thinking about clarity about speakers for these workshops um, we wanted to see the names of everybody who was proposed in that one to maximum of five um, we wanted to know who uh, which of the speakers would be um, almost guaranteed to be on site because we want a good balance of on site and online and that was not clear in the proposals that we saw as mag members reviewing um, there was a mix of that so again if possible could we make sure to see that in the provisional list of workshops so that we get full clarity on who it came from, who their speakers are, and will they really be on site? Because we said as the MAG, we don't want to see sessions that are one person in Kyoto and four online because it really doesn't work very well. That was one of the things we made as a criteria this year. We haven't seen that information so far. But as I said, if it's really going to make your life very, team's life very, very difficult, you may ignore me again. Uh, thanks, Adam. I'll talk to them and see how easy it is to do that. Uh, just one caveat. So we would be now choosing workshops based on the organization and Let me just say that again. No, not choosing them based on it, but it would be good to see as it was information we asked for in the first place. And it would help us understand a little bit about the, you know, the, the full sort of array okay. of organizations, um, okay. regions, we've got, et cetera, et cetera. Fortunately, we've got um, six minutes. Um, Peace, you're the leader of the evaluation group. Oh, who is? Adam is from our group. Just to add here, as in, we did try to see whether it was an IG or et cetera, Adam, in our group uh, and where it was coming from. As in, we can know. You can know. I mean, that's we, the we thing. We know that part. But in the speaker part, I have a concern because these are aspirational speakers. Exactly. Even now, yeah. It will only be there. We'll come to know towards the end. So this, uh, I understand where he has a concern of who is there, but it's too late in the day to even change it. For example, a organization has 10 from the five groups. How will we change it now? We can't. That's the concern. I and I agree with your concern. We had this concern. 
the fact that we can't change it doesn't mean I would. Well, I'd like to see it if I can just say that. Yeah, yeah. I will. Um, again, five minutes, um, Bruna. I'll be very brief. No, mm. and just to add it to the to the record because I think it's not about targeting organizations or anything of the sort. So it's not an absurd, but it's actually understanding whether or not the names of organizations has have been instrumentalized in the process because we know it happens. We know people reach out to people in the global south or global majority and say, can you submit this workshop? Because I've already submitted three. And you have nothing to say. You're, you're, and it's kind of like adds up to our kind of balance in terms of like who is proposing workshops, but it doesn't add up at all to the conversation or IGF's diversity. So just to put it on the record for it to be clear, it's not targeting organizations, but actually worrying about the balance in workshops and so on. Okay, um, I know Suki's got some concerns as well. I mean, one way of doing this is that the Secretariat can look at the, the, the things and see if any red flags um, come up. And yes, I have my doubts as well on the on those panelists lists as well, because as um, Amrita said, these are not at all definite, they're aspirational, and it, this, the, the, the longer we do um, hold on, the less likely they are to come. But yeah, uh, we'll just talk what's actually possible in the, uh, in the amount of time that we have, and um, we'll see. But Suki, please. Thank you, Shengatai. Yes, I, I think it's it's an absurd idea at this point of time, actually. I mean, this is we are causing a lot of work for to minimize something that is not a huge risk at the moment. I mean, actually, I mean, it's it's too much work and we have to go on with with the planning. I mean, this is something maybe we should also take as a lesson to learn for next year, mm -hmm. but not to adjust the processes now. Okay, thank you very much. If the chair agrees, we can adjourn until three and I'll just have a talk with the team and we'll see what we can do. Um, but yes, um, I think it's important to inform the organizers as soon as possible and they can get into confirming those panelists, uh, booking their tickets and things like that. Um, there's, Marcus always used to say, you know, perfection is the enemy of the good. <laughs> and, yeah, and how close to perfection can we get to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that, we'll be adjourned.
One, two, three, test. One, two, three, test. Okay. correctement. Tu m'entends 1, 2, 3, est-ce que tu m'entends 1, 2, 3.
Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen in the room, and good afternoon, evening, and morning to those who are joining us online. I hope you can hear us online. Just double checking. Yes, we can Great. hear you. Uh, thank you very much. So this is the afternoon session of the um, first day of the MAG meeting just to uh, make sure that you're all in the right room. And um, I think we can start. I, I think when we left, we had, I'm gonna hand it over to the chair just now, but just to recap, when we left for lunch, you, um, some MAG members said that they were going to look at the town hall sessions and um, come back to us now with some feedback. So I think that's where we left off. Am I correct? Oh, sorry, let me put it the other way, which is always easier. Am I not correct? <laughs> All right, then I'll hand it over to the chair. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So we had a lot of good exchange before our extended lunch. And I really appreciate the spirit with which the comments were given. So I would like to make a proposal which goes like this. We adopt the work that has been done for these, for, through these committees up to this point, that we document deficiencies in the process that we have identified, but that specifically we do not change the, the work that has been done on, on these um, processes. The reason for this is because we set up the process with clear documentation about what to do and what to expect. The secretariat team has worked tirelessly to implement that on our side. And everyone who participated in making a proposal had a single set of instructions that was the same as everybody else's relatively to the, the particular topic area. Personally, I am a big fan of more that we can do for gender. But I also am a big fan of equity and fairness in the rest of the process. And so I would ask you to consider my proposal that we not make any further changes and that we retain the sense of the business that was done up to this point. And I would like to entertain um, any discussion on my proposal. Rita? Thank you, Paul. Amrita, for the record. Um, just a point, as in, uh, with no disrespect meant for any of the subgroups, um, I know what our subgroup worked on in terms of proposal, but we, uh, the MAG members, have not got a chance of the different subgroups to actually look or even discuss what the, the proposals the other subgroup have chosen. For example, uh, from our subgroup, we may think that we have done the best, but some other subgroup may, uh, people, other MAG members may have some comments about or questions on what we have chosen and. That has been a discussion which has happened in the past also. So perhaps if um, a time at least till the end of the day is given, if, if any MAG members have any questions, etc., on the sessions to come back, and we take it as a final by tomorrow, would that be okay? As in, this is just a request because honestly, I have not gone through the rest of the proposals. I have just seen the names. Um, 
some other MAG members may have done it, but uh, as in just to give a benefit of doubt to people. I respect whatever has come from the subgroups and I am okay, but just in case uh, we may have some comments or questions on any of them. But I, as, as I said, this is my personal comment, but I'm okay if the MAG agrees uh, that we go with the entirety. Um, maybe su start by supporting Amrita's suggestion, but I keep wondering what sort of message messages are we giving to community if we still fail to include gender in the agenda? Like we lost the BPF gender, we are not taking into account, account like as a streamlined approach to the entire evaluation process, like as many gender discussions as we agreed on having. And once again, at the beginning of the year, we had a very in-depth conversation of maybe two hours on how we were taking the gender debate as an overarching discussion to the IGF this year, because it is relevant. There's a lot of debates that come out of it. And if you discuss things from um, participation in the broader IG processes to AI and biases, it's always kind of more or less attached um, to this question. So. I keep asking myself what sort of messages are we sending to the community if we keep on every year coming back with just two or three gender related panels. And, but just to say that I support Amrita's suggestion because if we get to take a second look at the list and we see that maybe there is more than just the three that I've identified and like maybe four or three more bring in different intersectional aspects or intersectional discussions on gender and race and other um, relevant discussions, then it's okay, but we don't have, we don't have this kind of um, results yet without taking a further look and a full look at the list. So just should put this on the record as well. Thank you. I thought I saw some flags go up on the side. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Chris Buckridge, uh, Technical Community MAG member. Um, I also think Amrita's point is a good one. I think it makes sense to sort of adopt in a, temp in a tentative way um, the work that's come out of the subgroups with an understanding based not, not only on the gender issue and how we're going to address that, but also based, in, based a little on our discussions about main sessions and town halls. Um, there may be a need in the coming days to sort of revisit and, and think about are we covering all, all the issues that we need to cover. So I, I don't think that would result in major changes to the list of workshops, but it's probably good to keep our options a little bit open there. Um, I think on, on the gender issue, I'm, I'm, again, just this is just um, more thinking about it in a, in a sort of sense of what we can do based on the situation we're now in. Um, I, I think an idea for a main session that does draw on the gender related elements or aspects of other workshop sessions and put them into a sort of cohesive narrative of you know explaining the relevance and the the importance of gender across all of these issues is is probably the best next step we can do to make sure that it has that sort of importance and prominence in the IGF 2023 agenda um, and so, yeah, I, I think that's probably something that we can do in the later discussions today or tomorrow about what those main sessions will look like. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I think there is probably also time, as Amrita said as well, for us to um, go back and have a look uh, and, and see if there are any sort of things that were missed in any of these discussions so far um, where there, there is a, a gender element or a gender aspect to some of these proposals might make sense. And help them into um, the accepted group. Thanks. Well, I'm sorry if I'm drawing away from the current thread. Um, there was a request for the breakdown um, of the selected workshops uh, as far as the statistics were concerned. Uh, we are ready with that and if you want to hear it, uh, we can call upon Eleonora to just give us a quick summary. It's relevant, so let's hear it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll also paste it into the 
um, online into the WebEx if possible. Yeah, we can uh, we can also circulate it on the uh, on the mag list. Uh, so the um, the high level takeaway is that the breakdowns for the selected uh, workshops are very much in line with the overall proposer pool. Uh, so in terms of gender, um, more than half, 55%, uh, came from women. Um, male is uh, 44%, and um, other or non-binary uh, is 1%. Um, whether um, the proposers were new to the IGF or not, 37% are newcomers. Uh, and then the rest, 63% uh, are not. They've uh, organized at an IGF before. The stakeholder group breakdown is as follows. 48% uh, are from civil society. 19% are from the private sector. 18% are from the technical community. 9% uh, from intergovernmental organizations and 6% from government. Uh, the regional breakdowns, uh, again, in line with the overall proposer pool, um, uh, the, uh, the highest number of submissions uh, is still from um, the Western European and others group at 34%, followed by Asia at 23%, uh, Africa at 16%, Latin America and the Caribbean 11%, and 10% uh, are from intergovernmental organizations and 6% are from Europe. Um, so yeah, apologies if I'm sorry. Apologies if that uh, rundown was a little quick, but we'll be uh, sharing the data so you can read it over more carefully. Thank you. Add him onto the floor. He's still front. Did you want the floor? I just wondered if now was perhaps not a great time to talk about town halls as we have other things going on. But if you want to come back to it, and I did want to check when, when Paul, you said we're sort of closed on process at, for the moment, respecting on where we've gone so far. I'm hoping that town halls are not quite included in that because I think we have something that's unresolved. And, um, um, yeah, yeah, but don't worry. You tell me. I don't think we have to talk about it right now. There's a threat going elsewhere. But. Yeah, okay. But they, they, I was not including town halls in that description. So does anyone else have any commentary or thoughts about what Amrita has proposed? Paul, I think it may be better to ask people, are they okay with this current selection? If okay, we go ahead or we give everyone 24 hours <laughs> and ask them to say, at least raise their hand if everyone's quiet. I'm certainly uh, <clears throat> happy to have a, a, a reflection of the room. So will you raise your hand or your flag if you are okay with what Amrita has proposed? And if you are not, no one is not a, okay. <clears throat> A 
Yes. Please take the floor. Sorry, so this is Elisa Heaver for the record. Sorry. Um. I want to be at the fun table. <laughs> sorry, this is not. Yeah, OK. OK, so sorry the, for, for everyone else. There was a device like echoing me right in front of me. Um, um, but from this like kind of vote here, I, I tend to get that three quarters of the Mac doesn't have an opinion. Um, I, I would like to ask everyone to really sh express what you think. I, I think it's important that we, we do show what we think and that we don't like kind of show the rest of the world that we're just laying back and letting things go and not really deciding upon something. It's, that's how it, our task, we should decide. Thank you, I agree with you. Carol. Yes. I, think, I think some of us are confused because we have two proposals on the floor, I think. Paul said something earlier and then we had Amrita, but then we were only asked to vote on Amrita. So I think we need to be clear or more clear of what it is we're, we're voting for. Okay, that's, <clears throat> that's fair. So I'll, I'll reiterate my proposal, which is that we do not change anything effectively, but we, we take the data and the discussion, and we use it to shape next year's IGF. That's my proposal. And we move forward with the work that has been done um, on all of these items. And then Rita, I will let you speak for yourself because uh, you responded and you now have a label, the Amrita proposal. Just to clarify, Claire, I was requesting that while we agree on the lists which have been given by the subcommittees, we perhaps have end of the day for MAG members to review and come back just in case they have any questions about the shortlisted sessions by all the groups because we may not have had the time to review all the sessions. But I'm open as and I'm okay with whatever as a group we agree upon. Young Bunan, Mag member, I just want to want I just want to support Amrita's proposition proposition that uh, we want to have up to this the end of the day to decide. Then it will give us the benefit of doubt. Uh, I trust on the works that have been done by each subgroup, but uh, it's just in case of. Let's give us the end of the day till the end of the day to decide. Thank and you. If I were to withdraw my proposal in favor of the Amrita proposal, what would the temperature of the room be? Yes, Justin. Um, thank you and, and good afternoon, everyone, and happy to see you all in person was online for, for much of this, but um, didn't miss some of the morning conversation. I, I think it does uh, make sense that um, after the working groups have, have, or working groups, groups, whatever it was, have done their work, that there is a consolidated list um, just to provide visibility. And then the MAG probably as a group should then have, you know, the ability to look at that whole list and, and make any modifications. With that said, I think it should be a fairly high bar uh, to make modifications um, after we've gone through a process of ranking, discussion, 
proposing, you know, all the work. But I do think that it makes sense to have that both that visibility and that kind of opportunity for the MAG to make a collective decision. Thanks. Is there anyone else who would like to weigh in on this? Yes. Um, thank you, Nima Lugangira again. Uh, I also agree with the fact that I think it will be beneficial uh, for us as MAG members to just review everything together. And that, that also creates the ownership as a group because we've done them uh, in separate groups and now going through it, having any clarification. So I think it's a good idea. Maybe we can just agree what would be the cutoff time, being mindful that we have limited time. So if it's by end of today, then I think it's something that can be agreeable by most. Thank you. And I'll, I'll call the on something. Oh, yeah, no, no. Uh, Okay. I've got one person, Bruna. Thank you. No, just to support once again the looking, the, the idea of looking again at the list because, like, for our group, division, divides and, and fragmentation, like, since fragmentation had a smaller pool of things we needed to approve, the deviation was different than the divides one. So the, no, the kind of like the grades were different to each of them. It's not fair to say that we all took the same approach into looking at the sections because we didn't. Some, some things had different pools to pick up from than others and we had different um, proposals and so on. So I, I would be supportive of that. And once again, I don't think the whole idea of like, let's reassess this for next year works because again, we didn't reassess it for this workshop kind of review process. So I would really like to see some sort of a more structured plan for us to have these discussions because otherwise I would just maybe prefer for us to have it dropped because like it has a toll on some big parts of the community. I'm speaking as like a civil society and like a lot of the groups that I talk to have this in, in high regard. So it's again, not a really good message that we're sending to the community if we compromise on taking an approach on that and we don't follow through with that. So that's all I'm gonna say for now. Okay, thank you. Other comments? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm slightly confused because if we assigned percentages and ratings and persons followed those ratings, I, I think it's almost, I feel insulted really to say that our group did not follow the instructions. I think groups followed the instructions. Um, now, if the, the instructions may now not be correct. So if they're not correct, then we change them in uh, for next year. I won't be here, but <laughs> um, because if we stop now, that means we have to go through each one of those proposals, a hundred and God knows what to try and sort it out. And it's not gonna be by the end of the day. It can't be done by the end of the day. Uh, sorry, my understanding of the Amrita um, proposal is that we would just send the consolidated list of all the workshops. MAG members have a chance to look at them. They're not re-evaluating or redoing anything, but they're just looking at them. And then if they have any comments, um, that they can say those comments. It's not a, you know, a detailed evaluation as such. And you, something may come out of it, something may not come out of it, but it's just a chance for the whole mag to look at the, the workshop stream in total. And then they come back tomorrow morning if there's any um, issues or concerns. If, is that what the Amrita proposal is? Yes, I'm sorry for <laughs> even tabling it now. <laughs> but yes, as in if, if no comments come in by end of the day or before uh, yeah. the night, then it's accepted. If comments come in, then we may deliberate on that. I'm not saying revisit the entirety. I'm saying whatever 70, 80 we have shortlisted in case anyone has any questions, comments, doubts, uh, or say, or feels very passionately, as Justin was saying, that it needs not be there or it should be there with highly backed justification. We discuss it, else 
we leave it at what it is. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was just a chance to see the consolidated list and see the spread of workshops and comments if, yeah. Right. So, yes. Which one? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I think it's good practice for us to have the opportunity to review the 80 or so that we've selected. We have been broken into subgroups. Um, as others have said, Nemo has said, we, we should have an ownership of this, and that means the opportunity to have a last quick look through them. If there are red flags, something's a problem. As Justin said, then this should be a very high bar to bring it up as a problem, but there may be. And that's the point of having more eyeballs looking at it. But I think it's good process, good practice to do this. Um, and um, hopefully we'll have no problems, but we'll have done our job uh, a little bit more completely. Yeah. So, good and, suggestion. Uh, Thank you, Amrita. Yes, please. I'm mm -hmm. uh, getting a... Um, <laughs> No, thank you. After, uh, after lunch, brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, I, I, I was, I was going to say that maybe since we're also talking about the, the lesson, lessons going forward, um, perhaps maybe for 2024, the, the idea should be um, by the time we're gathering here, we have the list, uh, I think, already circulated, so that this conversation is more fruitful and also the agenda is very clear because now we're, we're tapping into. Um, our, our planned agenda. So maybe just a, a matter of improvement going forward uh, for 2024. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to ask if we would be all happy with the Amrita proposal. Is there anyone would object to that proposal? Going once. Going twice, going three times and gone. So we will adopt the Amrita proposal. Okay. And moving on. Yes. Where are we now? We are, um, is it main sessions? No? Very main. Very, I think we're main sessions. Not planning main sessions. This is where we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Town, hello, everybody. Hi. Okay, so I can the topic a... you all now love, um, town halls. There seems to be a bit of confusion around mainly what is the purpose uh, of these Adam? things? Uh, can you hear me? Are you wanting me to speak? Uh, no, we're just wondering why you're speaking. You, 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 want me to, you want me to leave the room? I mean, I'll, I'm in your hands, Jack. No, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, because I was discussing with the chair, and then I just heard a voice. <laughs> no, sorry, I was being chaired by Amrita, so I, it's all over the place in, in my life. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Tell me what to do. <laughs> Shut up is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good. <laughs> okay, our heads are up now. We're paying attention to the room. We were just going to the next step. We were about to go into the main sessions. But, uh, yes, well, sorry. Tamir is waving her flag. I don't know if I want to get it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I just wondered if I might have a, uh, I know I'm not a MAG member, so if it's okay to take the floor for a second to comment on the workshop process, now that the MAG has finished the deliberation. Is, is that okay, or am I jumping the agenda? You're jumping the agenda, but I think it's okay if you're short. <laughs> All right, so I, I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, from a perspective of, of, of an observer, um, having sat through the conversations of the MAG t today and, and most of yesterday, uh, regarding the workshops, I, I just wanted to share that I think the observer community might appreciate a bit more transparency uh, from the from the MAG uh, on on the methods um, through which the, the selections were made. We understand that there are lists and scores that are not public, and those are 
uh, of course, for the MAC to decide uh, on how those are shared. And, and, and um, I do thank all of you for the great work that you have done. Um, but I think for the, to increase the legitimacy and, and transparency of, of the process, I think it would be great to, to share um, the, the lists of the workshops that you have um, selected, especially because we understand that selections were not made solely on the scores, but on other criteria. So I think a, a clear explanation of what was the process that the MAG has gone through and, and what was the result of that selection um, would be appreciated by the observer community and, and, and the community as a whole. And I do understand that you are still working on this. Um, so perhaps when, when this is done, a formal uh, sharing of what the results have been might be uh, helpful. Um, I, I think it, it would help uh, the community to buy in to the process and, and appreciate your work as a whole, uh, yeah. rather than just sharing the results with the proposers and, and that's it, and, and not having the clarity of what has happened here in the past day. That's a suggestion from my end. Of course, you can take it or leave it, um, but I think the community would appreciate understanding the process that you went through and what was the result of that process. No, I mean, if I may. We do share the results at the end of the process. We don't share them in real time <laughs> uh, because in the past that has led to lobbying, complaining, etc. This is an ongoing discussion and once the MAG deliberations are finished, the list is shared and has, I mean, I don't think there's been one uh, year that the, those lists have not been shared. We've traditionally used the uh, green for in, uh, orange, and the red that are not in. So that's there, but um, not in real time. And that is for the stated reason. Uh, yeah. OK, so moving on. Next thing is. Um... Oh, go ahead. Thank you for giving me the floor, although I'm no longer a MAC member, but I just wanted to underline what Timia said before. Um, I think it's more pleading for transparency on the process of the selection. And although I see that 398 workshop proposals are a big success story, with the numbers we've heard so far, only 20% of these will be accepted. And therefore, it's absolutely necessary to be transparent, not only why it's only 20%. That's obvious, because we had so many proposals never before. But I also assume if, it, if it's not transparent uh, how the decision was made, this could have a chilling effect on the whole community when it comes to next year's proposals. Because who would take the effort uh, to go through the whole process, to put together a workshop proposal, and then ending up with only 20% having been accepted. It, it, it's fine to accept that if people understand the transparent process, but since the process, if it's not communicated transparently, I, I'm afraid of a, of a chilling effect on the whole community. Thank you. I understand. Carol. Uh, Carol Roach, I, I think I'm, I'm looking at another part of the statistics um, given with regards to the stakeholder group. And um, I think we, I don't know how we're going to put the effort into, but I think the um, government percentages pretty low. So looking for, um, forward as the IGF, people might say, is it really? Um, multi-stakeholder, or are you going more towards civil society and private sector? So that, that's also something we, we need to, to look at. Um, lastly, what type of, and this is for future, what type of percentages are we looking for when it comes to gender? Uh, uh, we understand your point of um, the uh, 
government workshop proposals being very low, um, but this is also balanced by the open forum, and it was one of the impetus of having these open forums um, so that governments and IGOs can apply and have a presence. So um, I don't think we should aim for equal representation within the workshop stream because they have others which maybe civil society may not have as much access to. So that's part of the balancing thing. And that's why we have some of these um, different streams uh, going in. Um, I think I'll just answer that. I'll just comment on that. That's just my comment on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Amrita, for the record. I think what Timia uh, and Yuta has raised is important, that the MAG needs to be transparent. Transparency can also be brought in in a different way. Um, like Changita mentioned that uh, it's a bit sensitive to give all the information at this point of time, because we ourselves are not, uh, we are not 100% agreed on the list so far. So what we could do to at least instill um, some kind of confidence that um, on the process which we had, that after the list is shared to the community or the wider MAG, X MAG group, etc., we also say that you know these par apart from rating it based upon the parameters which were given, there were other criteria which were looked into, like you know the first timers or um, having diversity of topic, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so that at least at a broader phase people, the community knows it's just not the rating, it's just not who is submitting it, but also we are trying, it's not 100%, but we are at least trying to bring some kind of semblance into it. Uh, yeah. I hope that would help people yeah. who are observing. Uh, uh, just to comment on that, um, when you grade the workshops, we have the comments section. So that comment section hopefully is an indicator of what it can be improved, what is wrong with that workshop. And those comments are sent to the um, workshop proposer. No, they are talking about the community knowing, for example, even they knowing what process. So I'm saying when we, if it's the entire mag list, I think Timia is saying that as an observer, they need to know what process we followed. So if people want to know the process, we just bulleted that we had certain criteria. It's not in the evaluation and grading criteria that we... Grading uh, and other things. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just trying to... I, I'm hearing them, but I'm also trying to get actionable items that we can follow. You know, if there's a perceived non-transparency, what is the action item that we can follow next year that this perception is you know is not carried forward that's and also to say the numbers were given by the secretariat the cutoff numbers that okay from hr we yeah, can take uh, 10. that's again, not mag uh, that's also another thing is that we have a set size of the meeting and um we were, I mean, these has been discussions in the past about, you know, smorgasbord, how big do we want the meeting to go? If it goes bigger than a certain point, then smaller countries will have difficulties um, hosting the idea of we may um, price ourselves out of the hosting market, so to speak. I mean, there's a lot of these issues um, that are coming in if we say, okay, uh, we had, you know, we have 400, every single year, it's been an upward curve of the amount of workshops. Um, and we cannot have an increase in the size of the meeting to accommodate the workshop. So maybe one way of doing it is to rethink the way that we do workshops. Uh, I mean, there's lots of proposals that have been banded out there. Instead of having a call for workshop proposals, we have um, committees going around the themes, and those themes then do the workshops in that. So it's not a call, for instance. Uh, am I getting, I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. 
uh, and then they make those workshops to fit into that. I mean, there's a whole lot of things. And we are open. I mean, this is the IGF. We say that we are not afraid to experiment on certain things. So, yes, if we have a solid um, proposal that we can implement and the MAG agrees to it, yes, we can. But we cannot, we cannot be expanding um, the IGF to suit the number of workshops. There's something else that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, um, Alaji, a MAC member. Um, uh, I, I think, um, Chengatai, what you have um, said actually is, is perfectly correct. Um, what happens is as we continue to, to, to be engaged in MAC, we need to continuously also learn what actually has worked and what actually has not worked. Now, in terms of the transparency, you know, um, you know we, are, we are guided by certain criteria like diversity, um, uh, um, uh, policy questions, hybrid, whatever it is. Now, perhaps in the system, maybe if you can do it in such a way that if you, if you rank a particular area like hybrid very low, maybe the person who is actually doing the review must be forced to indicate why. For example, for me, whenever I rank you, for example, diversity very low, I will indicate the reason why. So at the end of the day, once you pull up the results, if my workshop is not taking, then I should be able to know why did my workshop not, not, not was not taking. Because if you look at it right now, the Excel seed, you will see that somebody may have scored 4.1, but the workshop actually is not accepted. And 4.1 actually is really very high. So perhaps that person needs to know exactly why was my workshop not accepted. So I think that could be helpful in the system itself, the way we, we do the grading. If you score very low, the person should be able to indicate why am I rating you very low. And that is for, for, to increase transparency. Not like you have 4.1, um, somebody get 4.2, so oh, so the difference is too too low. So so for the sake of transparency, I think we need to be able to uh, make the system work in such a way that once you score something very low, the person scoring should be able to tell why I should have a score low, so that the feedback would be really very good for the individual who has done the workshop. So from what you're saying, the actionable item is that for the workshop evaluation, when you uh, MAG members should be said if you score 4.1 or below, the MAG member who scores that workshop should write down the exact reasons in the comments section, which we have, but yeah. Yes, but we should underline that that is part of the duties. Um, it's just to, to help the proposer. Uh, you know, when you talk about trans transparency, again, you know, you want to make sure that everything is actually very clear because the secretariat actually has nothing to do with the, the you know, the, the, gra the grading of the workshops. So it's us that actually does the grading. So when we, when we score something low, I think it's upon us to also state why actually have I done this. And that's going to help the secretariat when they pull the results and someone wants to get the feedback from the secretary, why was my workshop not actually accepted? Because of I got four or 3.95, whatever it is, out of five. So, so that's just, just to help in the, in the transparency of the, of the work that we do. Okay. Uh, yeah, I could. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh. There's Teresa and Bruna. Um, I would take Teresa first because she hasn't spoken to you online. Teresa? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thanks uh, everybody, and sorry I'm not with you in Geneva today. Um, I think there are two sides uh, of uh, this discussion on transparency. One is uh, towards the outside, how transparent we should and can be, and one is uh, how to possibly streamline the internal process we have at the map. Uh, I hear what Timea was asking for. Uh, at the same time, uh, I also think that the reason why we as MAC members were selected was that uh, there is also some level of discretion uh, that, we, um, that we have uh, in these terms of what proposals uh, make it in the end. Uh, I do think uh, that there has been um, kind of almost a sufficient level of transparency in what are the factors of evaluation, how we look at it, why, for instance, aspects such as the hybrid format of the sessions are important. But I don't think that we should go that far, uh, such as like disclosing in detail what are exactly the, the percentage points um, um, 
uh, across uh, the various um, evaluation lines. At the same time, uh, MAC meetings are also open uh, to the community. So uh, in this sense, like how much more transparent uh, can it be? And the only thing that is not transparent to the community is uh, like our internal deliberations we have in the private list or in meetings uh, where we kind of try to compare notes with each other and sometimes change our opinions. Um, uh, I also disagree uh, that the fact that the IGF is competitive uh, and uh, only 20% of proposals make it will discourage people uh, to submit more proposals. I think we have experience also from other policy spaces such as RightsCon that uh, you know are very competitive as well and um, uh, kind of the interest of the community to try to make it um, hasn't been like suffering and uh, it's a better problem to have uh, than having a situation uh, where low quality proposals only in small numbers would be submitted because it would compromise the quality of the uh, of the whole event when it comes to the internal uh, processes of course uh, some things can be improved um, for me, uh, the biggest challenge that I see that we all do this as volunteer work, uh, it's not a full-time job, I guess, from none of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are some limits, you know, in how far we can go. I mean, frankly speaking, uh, hands on heart, you know, not uh, everybody even manages to evaluate all the proposal, not an ideal mm. scenario. Uh, and I do have to admit that this year, for the first time, myself included, I haven't managed to evaluate every single proposal in my batch because I simply didn't have the capacity to do it. Uh, uh, there is limited capacity in, in groups to even come together and discuss every single proposal in meetings. So uh, it's a problem, yes, but um, uh, let's be realistic. You know, when you get 100 plus proposals to go through, uh, what is the level of detail that MAC members can give, you know? So one possibility, because Cengeta, you asked for action items, was um, to have smaller teams, uh, evaluation teams for specific... Um, uh, sorry, I see some voices there. I hope you can still hear me. Uh, but... Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I think it's somebody unmuted in the, in the WebEx room. Um, so my suggestion for next year, which will not be my year anymore, uh, but uh, but maybe for other MAC members, future MAC members to consider, is that um, we have lower number of people evaluating lower number of proposals, hopefully having more time to give this personalized attention um, uh, to the batch. Um, that's the only idea I have at this moment. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, vote. Uh, thank you, Paul Valtonatis, observer. Thank you for giving me the floor. Um, I would like to give a little warning that is going around in the technical community and in industry is that, as we see again this year, as Eleonora said, that 41% of the proposals come from civil society. And I said something yesterday about talk shop, but that is how in general, it is perceived by other communities. And I know that doesn't sound pleasant to hear, but they are dropping away. And they've been dropping away for years. We even see less government representation, I think, at the IGF, if I'm correct, since COVID. So if we want to bring these organizations back in the panels, in the discussions, then you need to reflect on their representative in being present in proposals. And yes, open fora were created for governments. I totally uh, agree to that, but not for other communities. And they are sharing this message with me and slowly dropping away through the years. And should the MAG not take that into consideration when scoring the proposals? But that's just an observation. Thank you. Thank you. Adam. Hi, um, going back to Adam, speaking Adam, going back to Tamea and, and to Yuta's comments about transparency, 
Just speaking personally, I'd be more than happy to have the Excel sheet, which was the compilation of all workshops and how they were ranked shared. Um, but that should only be done with the a few additional documents attached. For example, the Secretariat gave us a very helpful guideline and suggesting um, the allocation by subgroup, um, the number of workshops that might be allocated, that we, we suggested there should be 80 workshops, and noting that there was a lot of discussion and re-evaluation in person here, which is what we always do. So that when somebody sees that perhaps they were ranked 81, and somebody was ranked 150, and 150 gets in, and 81 doesn't, to understand that that initial Excel sheet reflected the first work of MAG members as individuals, not working in teams. So that was an initial review. And it's fair to share that. It does have comments with it. It should have comments with it. I see no reason for not sharing it, so long as people understand that this is not going to, you know, don't blame us for doing more work in person, because that's what we've been doing in all the gaps and sessions right now. I know people will be upset. They'll say, why am I suddenly out when I looked like I was in and all that? The reason why is because member, members discussed in person and reevaluated. This was an initial take. But I know these things have been shared in the past. I'm personally comfortable with it. I'm not suggesting everybody else should be comfortable with it. And I don't think we should have a vote on this as Adam's bad proposal, just to make that clear. Um, but I just wanted to get that on the record. I'm perfectly happy with it. Certain caveats, certain additional information. It has been shared before. I'm not sure how helpful it is, except it gives you something to grumble about. Um, but yeah, um, just, to, just to say that. Um, yeah, good luck next year, guys. Thank you. Abdul? Um, thank you, Abdurrahman, uh, MAG member. Um, it, it is interesting statistics that we hear about uh, the soon be called successful proposal uh, in terms of percentage wise, but I think it is important to see the input statistic as well. For example, for government, if 6% if make it, we want to understand how much from multi-stakeholder that we have, how much the input is coming from the government, from other stakeholders. I think that will give us, the two numbers together will give us more idea about if, if we have one stakeholder uh, is, is dropping interest in, in, in submitting proposal, and thus we need to put uh, action in place to, to, to make it. The other thing that, it's what I noticed through, through evaluating the proposals, there is a different maturity of proposals. And, and there is always an advantage for the people who have been through the process and provide briefs uh, workshops at IGF. And I think there is a need for a guideline for the newcomers. Just make sure that we, we draft a guideline from their perspective, how, how they write the proposal to the maximum level uh, of, of, of success if, if the content is right. And again, this is a competitive process, uh, and I think uh, yeah, any 20% is, 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 is a good indicator that uh, this, is, this is a very competitive uh, process. And again, I, I agree with, with, with Adam and, and the rest of the team about transparency and if we can share with the community what we can share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bruno? Thank you. I don't understand, I mean, I think there's a lot to discuss and unpack about this, but I, I don't really think that this is probably the appropriate moment. I think we should be having a more in-depth discussion on main sessions or what we're going to do with town halls. I do understand um, Timia's request, and I think we could, and we can always improve um, how transparent we are in terms of the process and the evaluation. Um, maybe my suggestion here would be for us to have, um, once we conclude the workshop evaluation process, to have maybe a note from the MAG chair on how hard the process was, how many um, submissions we had, how difficult was the process in terms of like balance, regions, stakeholders, and so on, because I agree with what was said in the chat. Like, actually, the statistics now on how many groups submit, how many sessions doesn't really mean a lot to us because they all fulfill the multi-stakeholder kind of balance and compromise that we take through on the workshop evaluation. So it's not fair to say that governments are dropping or, I mean, any other stakeholder might be losing interest. They're all still involved. The workshops are still um, like multi-stakeholder in a lot of senses. But 
maybe we get to have a clearer picture once the IGF happens and it's part of the process. But for now, I wouldn't say that the, from the statistics we got, the only relevant ones are possibly the regions um, and the gender balance kind of thing on who are more or less, but they don't say a lot to us in the end of the day because they are supposedly um, filling all the, the criteria. But I would maybe just ask for us to go back to the main session discussion because they might be more like urgent. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for I, uh, Thanks for that, sorry for just jumping in. And yes, I mean, my statistics, I think they lies, damn lies than statistics, I mean. Yes, these are the statistics for uh, the workshop sessions, but I don't think from these statistics you can derive and say, as Bruno was saying, that government participation is decreasing. No, I don't think it is. And what do you mean by government participation is decreasing? Are you saying that the number of governments, individual governments of the 197 uh, member states is decreasing? I don't think so, because if you look at the statistics on the registration statistics and the people who actually attended the IGF, it's increasing. Um, are you looking at the percentages of the sessions they are? I mean, governments are a defined group. I'm just picking on governments. Are a defined group, 197, you know, uh, I hope, uh, 197 governments compared to how many private sector, how many civil society entities. So yes, there are a smaller percentage, but uh, it's also, we have to see the way that we also look at these statistics. And we shouldn't say this because of this, it equals that um, as such. But anyway, I'll keep quiet now and maybe it is a great idea to go to main, session. main sessions. Main sessions are up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I just wanted to quickly clarify that um, in terms of government participation, oftentimes uh, governments as governments may not necessarily um, apply for sessions, but they attend high level sessions and they're speakers in several other sessions, including civil society, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's, it's, it's not a just uh, comment to state that government is reducing because rarely would they apply for sessions. Thank you. And just also to say a word about civil society. Yes, they're the majority, but how many civil society people are there, you know? <laughs> so, of course, they should be the biggest uh, bunch, but uh, those are the things that we have to juggle. <clears throat> so, switching hats. Put your, put your main session hat on. And... Uh, who would like to go first? Bruna, welcome to main sessions. <laughs> Happy to join. Yeah, I was, it was actually the same thing, Amrita, because I think we might, um, yeah, to have the block schedule on the screen <coughs> as the initial step. And I would maybe suggest for us to start discussing whether we are adopting the approach suggested by the secretariat or not. Like, how many slots, in fact, do we have? Um, which slots are we giving? Are we allowing for this overlapping kind of moment between the sessions who might have um, intersessional main sessions and the rest? Are we allowing for a DC main session, just like it was suggested on the list? So it would be good to discuss the approach before diving into the topics. So, yeah. Um, uh, yes, I think it's... Um... Good idea to, if we can display the plenary session schedule that we, um, sorry for uh, not forewarning you, um, that we have, if that's possible. Um, so I did send out to the MAG the draft plenary room 
um, schedule. It's an Excel file, and it has the ah, not the ah, proposed spread of the um, main sessions. Um, if we can get it up. Uh, Lewis, is it possible to put it up there? Oh, it's there. Great. Um, so there's the day zero high-level sessions that we have. Uh, these are just placeholders, by the way. It doesn't mean that understanding data free flow with trust is going to happen on that day. Uh, we're going to switch them around depending on once we talk to the panelists and get their thing, we're going to switch this around a bit. But it does give us an overview of these slots. So for the uh, main sessions, there's five main session slots of 90 minutes each, plus the main session slots for the policy networks and the um, best practice forum. Also the NRI main session. And um, there's one more session I think I'm missing out. Um, yeah, the DC main session. I don't see where it is now. It's there somewhere. Um, and of course, we have the parliamentary uh, round table, which is the capstone session for the parliamentary track. Uh, this year, we have this uh, session with the uh, Maria Ressa, who's the leadership panel um, member, and also uh, I think she won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2021. And also the former um, Prime Minister of New Zealand. Uh, um, this is going to be focusing on the Christchurch. Um, I'm just looking at them to correct me if I misspeak. Um, uh, proposal. Um, so that's the start. And that's what we have um, at the present moment in time. And yes, these can be switched around, but... At the moment, we can't grow or add uh, this uh, sets up the room. So this is forms the basis of our discussion. So we can, I don't know if you want to start. Yes. Uh, thank you, Oda Smug member. Um, I wanted to speak about uh, the scheduling, uh, specifically for the policy network on artificial intelligence. Um, that was scheduled um, on the last day um, in the afternoon. And as we know that many people uh, might have flights or might be outgoing. Uh, so if they can be rescheduling to accommodate into an earlier date where um, there might be people present. And this, this uh, topic is very keen uh, to many people. Um, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. And last year it was on the last day. Uh, yes, I had a. Um, again, these are just placeholders as such. We can um, switch them around. Somebody has to be lost. But since you were lost last year, definitely you cannot be lost this year. Uh, we have to keep it a bit fair in some manner. Yes. <clears throat> Chris. Thanks, Paul. Um, Chris Buckridge, Tech Community MAG member. Um, a, a couple of points. One, uh, I think Bruno and Adam were noticing in, in our discussion at lunch. Um, the session with Maria Ressa and Jacinda Ardern is listed also in the town halls. As I'm assuming this is the same session in those two things? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, these are not two different sessions that both have. No, no. It's good, the good. Same. Okay. We were Sorry. Just that... keeping it there for some. Just to, just to clarify. Yeah. Um, I think the other point that we have to have a think about as, as MAG and as, as Secretariat, um, in relation to those policy network sessions, um, so last year we had, for instance, policy network on internet fragmentation session followed by a main session on internet fragmentation. I, well, personally, just speaking for myself, I think that's probably not a, a great 
way to go. I think it's probably sort of seems needlessly duplicative. Um, but that being the case, what do we see this year in terms of, for instance, AI? So with the PNAI, is that the only AI main session that we have on the agenda? Um, and is that is that sufficient or do we want to try and have another one and how would we coordinate that to ensure that there isn't duplication, that the, the sessions are actually complementing each other? Um, and, and the same can be said, obviously, for the PN Internet Fragmentation and the PN MA. Um, Actually, there is another AI session, which is in the opening session. Uh, it's not listed yet because we're still trying to um, formulate it. Uh, once everything is confirmed, then we can say. But uh, we're trying to make it a special one. <laughs> so that's... Pardon? Again, that's why I'm saying I'm not saying anything until we <laughs> get something that we can say. But, yeah. You want to speak again? Oh, that was Chris. Sorry, I mix you. You look similar. Um, really? Chris and I look similar? <laughs> well, so, so, so much for gender. Um, <laughs> um, but, well, thank you. And um, I was just wondering on the special session, um, will, um, will the two speakers uh, be in person at the IGF? Because yes. that will... Okay, that's... Thanks. That was just my question. Thank you, Changita. I think, um, as I mentioned yesterday, and I agree with Chris, we should not try to duplicate sessions just because we want to. So for that sake, even if you, it is a controversial high-level session you are having, if we at least know some contours of it, we would not want to duplicate that kind of effort, even with the lowly staff people we are. Um, so that's one part. As in, there, there should be some continuation in the discussions, not disparity. But I think as, a, as MAG, we need to kind of think what are the main sessions we really want if we are agreeing that that PNAI, uh, AI, and the fragmentation or access is happening, then we may not want to, it may be clubbing of the theme and as well as the policy network work. Um, what are the things we want to discuss? And one thing which we were discussing, Bruna had raised earlier also, if we want to take up one specific topic and bring it through the gender lens, because we do not have a gender session and all that, you know, we didn't have BPF, et cetera, but it should be meaningful. For example, if you are looking, I'm again taking AI as an example and speaking like, are we, if you're talking about AI ethics, uh, privacy, et cetera, are we looking at it from the gender lens uh, or language if we want to mainstream it? We could also look at the topics which are of interest at the GDC. AI is one of them or something. Um, and we try to build upon it so that it adds value. It adds value for even governments whom we want to attract or even for the private companies or civil society, as many say, we are always there, but we are not heard. We are taken as heard at times. Um, so perhaps what I'm trying to say is, can we as MAG um, deliberate on what are the main sessions we want, that five which we have? Um, and then perhaps we work on one where we can have the gender lens. Um, that's just a suggestion to the MAG. Thank you, Bruna. Thank you. A um, few things. First of all, maybe a question, like how many other special sessions we might have like ahead of us in terms of the ones that aren't, aren't fully on this um, schedule yet? Like, so just because you mentioned that's the, it. that's what? it. Okay, oh, yeah. good, okay. Mm -hmm. Just for us to know because of the whole discussion on overlapping and mm -hmm. like, not duplicating the discussions and so on. 
Um, that's one thing. The second thing is that um, I've said it a few times already, actually. On the beginning of the year, we agreed that, um, more or less agreed that the main sessions wouldn't necessarily follow the same um, division as the sub-themes. So maybe just reinforcing Amrita's request for us to discuss like what will be actually the topics for these main sessions and that we also have compromised on having one on global governance processes and the GDC, WISIS plus 20 and things like that. So we might be looking at four instead of just five um, if we're following the agreement. And um, at the same time, I think there should be maybe a discussion on whether we're keeping the, the PN sessions possibly because just for us to see whether like where we're heading and how many like discussions on each of the topics because if we have the special session on AI and we have a PNAI session then we're already having two main sessions on this one topic and then it might be good to like have some other relevant discussions brought into the, the batch instead of AI for like moving forward and um, maybe just reinforce the needs to have this gender lenses, intersectional approach, not just through gender, but race as well in our main sessions, because last year we did have more or less, more or less of an issue, both in the high level track, but also in some of the main sessions in which we didn't have enough female speakers. So it would be really good for us to have the same approach to main sessions as we had in the workshop evaluation part. So nothing less than at least two female speakers aside from the moderation role, just so we're coherent moving forward. So, yeah. Adam. Thanks very much. Um, Adam's MAC member. A um, couple of comments. Uh, 90 minutes, uh, Maria Reza and uh, Prime Minister former Prime Minister Turner are very interesting, but are they very interesting for 90 minutes? Uh, two people talking for 90 minutes? I'm not entirely sure that that's going to work, and I'm not entirely sure that they'd really want to do it for 90 minutes, to be frank. Um, but, are you, you know. proposing 60? Well, whatever you want to do, but I don't think it's 90, is it? Let's be serious right. about this. Um, and I'm sure they're really going to be good. I'm pleased that, that, that this has worked out. Um, do we really need a best practice forum in there? It's a best practice forum that seemed to start work sometime in May. We, if we're going to put things on there, and sorry to pick on the best practice forum for cybersecurity, but what are you doing? You, you know, you've been ongoing for a number of years now, so why do you get a main session? I mean, let's justify why things are there, um, because we have an opportunity at the moment for the IGF to, to present the IGF in a strategic way, that in some ways, if not counters, then at least shows the, the great value of this multi-stakeholder process compared with things that we're hearing of, as possible outcomes from the Global Digital Compact. So we want to assert our primacy as an excellent forum. So let's look for excellence and also some strategic thinking in these, these forums. Um, it's very good to see the high-level leaders track, the, uh, the uh, data free flow and trust, the Japanese uh, initiative, and it would be very interesting to try and perhaps match that with a main session on data and usage, and we have some thoughts on you know, trying to match these sessions across, so that if there was a main session on data and trust, then we can look to, on sorry, a high-level session on data and trust, then we can try and match that with a, a main session, a plenary session on the same. If we're looking at WISIS plus 20 and um, accelerating the multi-stakeholder process, then how would that link to the proposed main session on UN Open Forum and a dialogue with the leadership panel. I have a question whether we really want a dialogue with the leadership panel. Perhaps that's something we could discuss with them on Thursday morning. Um, that could be adjusted. But what I'm trying to say is that if we have threads going through, like the leadership track on one issue, then let's try and match that with main sessions and get the best sort of strategic value from that. Um, even if we're going to have access innovation and revitalizing the uh, SDGs, there's been some discussion about how do, how do the SDGs get updated as a sort of digital ready, ready for the internet era, and perhaps that can be mixed with some other sessions. Um, so what I'm just trying to say is let's try and be strategic about this. Let's not always assume that every policy network is going to get a session, um, or even the dynamic coalitions, sorry. Um, and um, why, justify why a best practice forum should have it. I'm sure it's very good, but 
you know, let's justify why it's there. Thanks. So, um, do you want us, I'm just, not just from you, but from the other people, do you want us to break it down? We can have it, first of all, have a discussion on um, the PNEs and the best practice forums. Should we have them in that room or not? And then we can go through the other intersessional activities that are having main sessions. And they can just give a brief. Is that one way forward? Uh, just break it down, have that discussion, see whether or not, before we have the final discussion, which I doubt we're going to complete today in any case, about the actual main sessions. Uh, but before that, Justin, I mean, Chris. Um, thanks. Well, yeah, if, if we're doing that, it, it might change um, my, my comments. Uh, I did have one question, just did we know what the theme of the parliamentarian track is? Sorry if I missed that. Um, I, I, I hear what Adam's saying. I might disagree a little bit. Uh, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but between the, the high-level events and the main sessions, um, I, see, I see, you know, that they're, different, they're organized different ways, and so maybe the, the IGF and the MAG, you know, there needs to be a session that kind of corresponds, but I, I think we also need to try to avoid duplication and create, you know, interesting, unique uh, conversations. Maybe there's a way to kind of find a different angle to talk about similar things. I don't know. Um, but I think just not trying to duplicate things. Um, but with that said, I think on AI, I, I do just think it would be very odd for the IEGF not to have uh, a main session on AI. I just, it, with the conversations happening everywhere, uh, both inside the UN and just everywhere, uh, it would just seem odd that there's not some main session. If there is part of the opening ceremony, got it. Um, that's, you know, an interesting part, piece of a conversation. But it just seems like this is one that's really prime right now for a, a multi-stakeholder, broad, somewhat open-ended conversation uh, on AI. And I think the same thing with the Global Digital Compact. I, I, don't, I, I don't, almost don't suggest we get too clever with the way we frame that. There almost needs to be a 90-minute conversation about the Global Digital Compact. This will come soon after the issues papers released in September. The co-facilitators have indicated they're coming, but I don't see where they would plug in on, on some of this. Maybe the main session, I don't know. But before the ne negotiations start, I think the IEGF is kind of prime, uh, or very well placed to offer important feedback on the issues paper before the negotiations start in a multi-stakeholder setting with, with real experts there. And so um, I think we need to take advantage of that, of that opportunity. Anyways, thanks. Okay. Joy, oh, Chris Joyce. and Joyce. Uh, Justin, for the record, uh, just to echo um, uh, Bruna and support her point around uh, trying not to duplicate, uh, but also given all the conversations that are happening this year, I think it's important that uh, for the main sessions also to include more sessions around um, the global uh, corporations. As you mentioned, we are having conversations about GDC, uh, which is plus 20. It's and the IGF, so it's important that uh, during this IGF, we are able to capture those conversations um, as a way forward. Thanks, Chris Buckridge, um, Tech Community MAG member. Uh, actually, we've started going in the direction that I was going to suggest. I was going to say, rather than um, starting with sort of discussion about whether we want the policy networks or the BPFs to have a main session. There are five slots up there, at least, mm -hmm. that are currently um, ambiguous as to what they'll be. And it'd be good to have a discussion about what we really want to see in these main sessions as sort of plenary sessions that will put the IGF in best light, make sure it's, it's a really interesting discussion. And as I say, I think we've begun that now. I think um, the points about AI needing to have some prominence there, obviously more discussion to have about the opening ceremony or, or whatever. Um, about having a digital cooperation session probably focused primarily on the GDC, though I think we'd have a little discussion as to where WSIS Plus 20 fits into that. Is it a broader session that incorpor 
incorporates that as well, or do we do something separate as a different session? Um, I think we've talked about possibly using one of these main sessions as a gender um, cross-cutting session to sort of pull, draw in different elements from the various themes and look at the relevance of gender in those issues. Um, so, I mean, I think that, that to me seems like a more useful place to start. And then once we've, if, if we exhaust ourselves at that point, then, then we can sort of look at, okay, then how does that fit with the sessions we already have there on policy networks and other intersessional work? Um, and if at that point we're still talking and still coming up with new ideas, then we can start talking about whether those intersessional sessions should be in, in a different format or somehow um, used otherwise. Thanks. Uh, sorry, Chris. Uh, gender, GDC versus plus 20, and what was the other one? There was AI, but that's AI. a bit of an open, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and you are aware that we do have this um, high-level leaders session on um, looking ahead to versus plus 20 and accelerating the multi-stakeholder <laughs> process. Uh, and maybe Bruno was a little bit right. Uh, we also do have this um, IGF 2023 UN Open Forum. Just one point of clarification is, and I guess again, yeah, this is something we think about every year, to what extent do we consider Day Zero part of the main program? Like, if we're seeing these sessions, these high-level leader sessions, uh, uh, is that just a distinct, separate discussion, um, or should we be looking not to duplicate that? I think there's a bit of an open question there. I, um, I mean, I would say they're all the one. And also, remember what I said as a caveat that all these are placeholders at the moment of the sessions. These will move around. Uh, it's just this is what the space we have, and this is the space that we're working with. Um, we still have to discuss with the hosts as well exactly which placement, et cetera. So placeholders um, to be moved around. Uh, Justin. I'll come back after. <laughs> okay, sorry, I wasn't, I was looking this way. Who's first? Maybe you'd be first because you haven't spoken. Karina yeah. Irarda, mm -hmm. MAC member for the record. Um, as a co-facilitator of the Vec Rising Forum with Jan Bambana and Justin, mm -hmm. I just want to remind everyone that cybersecurity has been one of the highest topic in the statistic of topic of interest in the recent years. That's all for me. Thank you. Uh, cybersecurity, you said, Yeah. Amrita, first, right? Um, and Justin again. Can I? Hey, Amrita and Bruno. Mm -hmm. You, Amrita, first. Thank you, Amrita, for the record. Um, as in two things, um, Justin clearly mentioned that we need to look at topics which are of interest. So obviously cybersecurity is something. I disagree with Adam out there. There should be something on cybersecurity because this attracts interest. The other thing is um, perhaps from the host side, we are, we are having a lot of discussions in the MAG. Is there certain things which, uh, I, I know it's a tight spot, but if there is something which is a priority for you or we could also think of it because we are looking at it from one direction in case you have some pointers, and that would also help. Thank you. Um, Bruno? They're asking if you want, if you want to add any, any topic here that. Um,
Uh, Bruno, please carry on while um, I think. I don't think we'll yeah. get an answer now, but if, we, if they think of anything that's not included, they'll have. It's okay. I was just waiting to see whether we, we had a follow-up answer. Just about um, the high levels, high, high level leaders session. Um, because I think the way we're looking, or we were looking at least on the global governance main session is slightly different because if we do a main session on this, it's supposedly a bottom up process of the MAG developing it with the community. But if we agree on doing this solely on the high level leaders slot, then it's slightly different the approach that's going to be taken on. And I think that there is some other things, relevant things that we ought to discuss with regards to the GDC, such as the sounding board suggestion and possible answers to the issues paper that's going to be um, um, out in September. So I would maybe here try to reinforce the point for us to keep at least one at one of the slots of the main sessions for global governance process with the focus on this possible kind of interaction between the IGF and the GDC because there's a lot of proposals at the table and I don't think um, the high level leaders on WISIS plus, plus any will possibly do it. So more or less on us maybe following the bottom-up approach of developing this one discussion, yeah. Um, yes, I did also mention that there is, um, so I may not have answered you fully, that there is that the, there is the UN session, and um, that may also involve um, the principal heads of organizations who are in charge of of you know these processes, whether it be GDC or WISIS or etc. I mean, we haven't really delved into it, but just to let you know that, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Justine. Justin, yes. Justin. Um, thank you. Yeah, on, on the so I'm going to talk about the kind of global governance cluster, uh, if, if that's what we're calling it. Um, I think that I, I look forward to the WISIS plus 20 session. I think it, a lot of information could be useful there. I, I'm a little skeptical, though, about showing up for IGF and the UN Secretariat's briefing us on what's going to happen with WISIS plus 20. Um, and, and this isn't just directed to the IGF secretary, but though you're sitting yeah. in front of the room. I, I, I would encourage some transparency about before IGF uh, about what's envisioned, planned, um, and then also the opportunity for that to be interactive um, to the degree that folks can come prepared to discuss that. Because, you know, ultimately there's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a multi stakeholder process. Uh, the UN. Secretary, different organizations have an important role, um, but it, but it's not you know the only uh, voice there. Um, yeah. But 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 I think it goes to another question that we we talk with this in GDC, but really there is a whole s a slew of processes that are cumulative going to impact the future of governance. You know, just in the UN system. So we talk about global digital compact, but even for the for the summit of the future, there's also a code of conduct on information integrity on digital platforms. There's a new agenda for peace. There's discussions about AI potentially being, you know, a part of that. Um, in, in addition to the global digital compact, and that's for 2024. And then you have WISIS plus 20 uh, in 2025, which has implications for the IGF. And all of that together, I think, is really talking about how the future approach of the UN on these issues. And, and I think that we have to find a way to kind of have that broader conversation. I say that, though, I, if the co-facilitators are coming, if the tech envoy or the office of tech envoy as the secretary for that process is there, and the IGF community, I really target a discussion on the GDC specifically, I think is warranted. It's at a moment in time when it would be very useful to have a very um, uh, focused, uh, in-depth 
you know, expert led multi stakeholder discussion on that process. So I recognize those are kind of saying two different things. I think we need to just focus on the oh, GDC, yeah. but also there's these broader issues. But 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 frankly, that's the reality. And and I, I think that the IGF or the community should find a way to to broach both of those issues in some way. Um, because if we if we go big, we're going to miss an opportunity to really focus on a process. But if we focus on that process, we're kind of missing this larger conversation about the future direction that, that the UN for sure, but I think the global community is kind of going on some of these governance questions. Oh, sorry, no, I agree with you. And again, we can have, there's enough there for two sessions. We can have one session for GDC, which can be the UN session. And we can also have another session on digital governance and the future. Um, and, you know, and that can be actually be more multi-stakeholder and, I mean, that's also an option. But we are still, uh, I have, what, one, two, three, four baskets here at the moment. Uh, I'm, you know, while you're speaking, I'm just five slots. We, I have gender, I have cybersecurity, I have, um, whether it or not it's GDC or digital governance, and um, the other one is WSIS plus 20, which can also be rolled into digital governance as well, since we do have a high-level session. Um, but you did mention uh, we do have a high-level session, which will be multi-stakeholder in, in any case. But these, again, these aren't strict. These are just what planets are forming in this solar system here. Uh, that's what I'm getting. Justin. It's, okay. You have to look to the back of the room occasionally, Chang'e Tai, please. Well, no, Make because we're having a conversation. Well, have <laughs> yeah, conversations yeah, yeah. or or go in the order of cards, but decide which it is, is a good idea. And um, I wanted to just say, I think with these GDC discussions, with this plus 20 discussions, we have to be careful that we're not going to have a session where people report on their reports. Um, I think we saw, you know, we've seen that before. We want to try and get to some meat of dialogue. Um, it's been quite concerning recently to read some of the things coming from the Secretary General in his press releases when he spoke about AI and then spoke about digital technologies as some of the most harmful things to humankind. I mean, there's some very, very negative and quite extreme comments about this. And we are, I think, on the other side of that. I think we're on the side for, you know, the internet we want and empowerment for all people. And, and, and we have to remember that. We shouldn't be responding to reports that may be couched in different terms. Um, so let's fight our, our side of this battle, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Um, what is, and this is a question, um, what is, a, and I'm sorry if I missed it, uh, what is a UN open forum? Um, because, um, yeah, well, what is it, please? Thank you. We've had this for the past couple of um, IGFs and where we have the heads of organizations that are... Given, given the time that we're in, I'm not sure we need to hear heads of organizations if they want to submit um, a written report or do a video that we can all watch in the main session. Absolutely lovely. But we're trying to, you know, we're at, it's a time of, of, of challenge, isn't it? So, so let's use it for not 90 minutes of listening to people talk about things that would be p wonderful to read, um, and I'm sure we all would, but, you know, I'm not sure. I'm sorry to be so blunt. Thank you. Uh, yes, Justin. Uh, thank you. I, 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 I will actually agree with that. I, I, and, and that's someone who attended the UN Open Forum last year, found it very interesting and helpful. Um, at the same time, I think it is for a specific audience, uh, and and it is not as dynamic. And so, uh, maybe there is, <laughs> you know, m maybe that is one can move off the main floor and, and be a more targeted audience. I, I, again, I found it interesting, but it kind of goes to the WSIS 
it was just being talked to, which there's a place for that, um, but but not as uh, interactive. Um, yeah, on the uh, just just coming back to the GDC, I, I just I, I think we do have to keep in mind if we've made a big deal about the co-facilitators coming, folks coming, um, that the IG, we've proposed the sounding board. If we miss the opportunity to actually use the IGF, the one real tool we have, I mean the the oldest tool we have, uh, it's a missed opportunity. So I, I almost just suggest it, you know I, I don't know how we want to structure this to chair the secretary. But like, you know, let's see if there's disagreement on some of these and, and then move to the next one so we can start knowing some of this down. Um, so if there's, if there's support for that, then maybe we can focus on that and then move on to see what's next. On the cybersecurity, uh, I agree. I mean, it's, it's an it's a incredibly important topic and gender. And so I'm, I'm intentionally tying these together. I wonder if there's a way instead of having very broad topics, though, we can find a, a unique way to talk about this. And frankly, on those two, I think there's a very interesting uh, conversation right now around uh, the uh, risks, particularly to certain groups uh, from the use of technologies online, things of that nature. I'm not advocating them, I'm just responding to some of the comments, like a security discussion that involved like, you know, uh, uh, tech facilitated gender-based violence and things of that nature might be a very timely and important conversation uh, that I think could actually garner a lot of attention and high level participation. Um, so I throw it out there as an idea, not as a proposal. Thank you. Um, just a very quick comment. At this moment, um, we really don't, well, my perspective, I don't know if you would understand, but um, we want to establish these five sessions, the subject area, and then we can drill down to a, exactly what we want in them. So if we are, I think, I mean, this is how I see the progress going. If we know, okay, as you were talking about cyber, yes, okay, cyber security, and then we can have our uh, groups that form around them, and then we can have that discussion, that very important discussion on exactly how the format is, how we can make it really relevant to the time, and, um, and also how we can make it engaging. Um, but for, for me at this present moment in time, if we have those five, uh, oh, sorry, we have four at the moment, right? Yeah, we have the gender, cybersecurity, uh, we have, um, GDC, uh, yeah. Um, then we have basically the future of digital governance that's talking about um, all these processes that are going on and how that will shape the future. And, and AI, yes, so that's five. Um, so th th that's what's on my scratch pad at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think we had Abdul Rahim, then, oh, it was Bruno. Can we have a list of, ha of who wants to speak now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your choice, yeah. <laughs> okay. Runa? Thanks. Um, I think we're mixing some things off, actually, because I'm having a little bit of a confusion on why are we considering um, cybersecurity for a main session if there's already a BPF main session on cybersecurity on this um, draft agenda. Are we doing both? Um, I think we are not doing both, right? At least it was the compromise of not having this duplication. So, I mean, should we just maybe scratch the, the BPF and, and, and all the intersessional sessions and then consider like a group of main sessions in which we're gonna allocate per topic? Or like, should we just skip them and just say that um, 
fragmentation, AI, cybersecurity, they all have their main slots already because I think these two things are on the table right now. Um, and in terms of um, the topics, it would be very unfair for us to move on without actually considering sustainability for our main session as well because we actually discussed it um, back in Vienna. So that's also the second one. I mean, maybe we can fine tune and, and see which, which kind of like um, thing we want to discuss about it. And um, maybe the UN Open, for, open Forum, I agree with Adam. It's, it's sometimes all of these kind of like reporting sessions, they, it's what I was saying which, with the top-down approach because they're not interactive. You don't get to ask questions to the UN agencies and that's kind of an issue if you're, if you're looking at it from a bottom-up community um, perspective. So maybe if we are really keen on having the agencies reporting, can't we do it on the opening statements from stakeholders otherwise and, and leave this lot for maybe something else and just have a small briefing notes from each of them? Because I also have a hard time understanding what is the opening ceremony, the opening session and the opening statements from stakeholders and that's taking four hours in this lot on the first day. So just, yeah, some more questions about it, but um, yeah, just, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I had that initial thing about discussing there, but then it was decided that let's focus on these five, and then if the five are filled, then we can go and look. So we decided to take that step. So that's why we're doing the things the way that we're doing so at this uh, present moment in time. I will not comment too much about the uh, UN Open Forum. Um, that's not my thing that I'm organizing, but I will relay your comments to them and whether it's a matter of reformatting the thing or et cetera, they can take another look at it. It doesn't have to be the same as it was last year, but we do have these people there and um, it will be of use to have them in some discussion that will inform the public and be of use to the um, participants. But yes, your comments will be uh, um, sent to New York about um, this one. Um, Carol. Oh no, yes, Alyssa. Alyssa, sorry. Oh yes, you were first in fact. We will totally miss you, you were first on the list. Um, Th thank you, Chengatai. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to support the idea to have a session on uh, sustainability or environment, something like that. Um, we've had it in, in previous years, and I think it would be good to build upon that. Um, um, and um, on the UN Open Forum, I mean, I, I I think it would be good to have other UN agencies involved in the IGF and, and, and hear from them. But please ensure that it's an interactive thing between the UN agencies. And then maybe, well, kind of what I asked yes, yesterday, um, interacting on, on the IGF messages, um, maybe from last year, what have they taken into account from that? Um, and and what, how can they also help the IGF? And please really ensure that it's not a um, just a summaration of what they're doing um, and, and, and ensure that it's a good debate between the UN agencies and, and to see if, if we can get some coherence between these agencies. Thanks. Carol Roach, um, MAG member. Uh, I, I think, yeah, I agree with what persons are saying, but I hope you don't take out cybersecurity. Uh, it doesn't become a casualty because within the cybersecurity, it's quite a lot. It's not only about um, crime and um, security issues. We had a lot of, of proposals on um, child protection, and that is a major concern globally. Um, so I just don't look at cybersecurity as oh, some techie thing talking about protection. It's, it, it's, it has depth, and I, I think it needs to remain. 
um, with regards to the UN Open Forums. Like Justin said, like, I quite enjoy them. Um, I catch up on things. I don't have to go read everything because they give me a summary. But also, um, you know, it's the UN. We're, we're, <laughs> we're an advisory to them, and I don't, I don't think we want to kick them outside the house while we use the house. Thank you, Paul. Um, Amrita, for the records. I think um, issues are important, and I agree that what the BPF is doing on cybersecurity is quite different from the various other cybersecurity issues. Um, and I agree with Justin here. For example, if you're looking at cybersecurity, we can try to marry it with something else so that we look at it. For example, one thing which we are missing is the human rights. Can we bring that into the picture with one of the tracks? Um, you know, how do we balance rights uh, in cybersecurity by design or even gender rights in cybersecurity by design? Because these are certain things, contemporary things which are being discussed, not broad, broad cybersecurity, but how we can bring a rights-based perspective, a gender-based lens into frameworks. Um, sustainability is important. Perhaps we want, and I think we have to creatively try to marry things off. Um, when we are talking about, say, AI, which is important, we try to look at it from different lenses. Um, for example, though the PNAI is working on gender and lenses, but that's important. Not everyone speaks in English. Uh, the non-English speaking people have a challenge. Do we want to bring in some creative discussions wherein we can raise the interest, also gather the interest of media, which is important, as well as um, the GDC discussion, because they want to mainframe certain discussions, or even access, for that matter. How do we bring in those discussions? So I think if we can agree on certain broad things, like if it's cybersecurity, AI, and we're talking about the GDC, we're talking about sustainability, and we marry a human rights and other things into it, um, uh, rather, we, I think we need to look at compromises now, since we just have five slots and try to get, and yes, I agree, it should be interactive. We need to have speakers who understand, not uh, say that, okay, I'm coming from this organization and we are great. Everyone's great, but we want some dialogue to take it to the next level. I think the briefings have to be good in that. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. And, and just coming back on the on the open forum again, I, I I enjoy the conversation, but I do think it should be conveyed back to New York that, um, you know, the IGF is not just an opportunity to come brief out. It's a place for dialogue, and I, I think that some of the challenges this year and some of the real angst is folks are concerned that particularly New York. Uh, is not listening to a broader community, but is very kind of proactively doing stuff uh, in a vacuum. And we need to be sensitive to that, and we need to ensure that the IEGF remains a dialogue, uh, not a, a briefing uh, forum. Um, on, on the main sessions, I, I, kind of going back, I, I do think that where we can have a more interesting program, and then also kind of, for lack of a better metaphor, kill two birds with one stone, is, is find a way to kind of have an interesting conversation that, that tackle issues, but in a context that addresses another issue. So I, I mentioned I, I think that uh, a gender security discussion is very prime. Uh, right now there's been a ton of interesting work this year uh, on that, and it's a very big challenge. And so uh, countering tech-facilitated gender-based violence or other kind of harms that are happening online to vulnerable groups I think could be a very uh, useful uh, com conversation. I think the digital uh, sustainability is also kind of one that we haven't discussed a lot in the past, but is emerging as a really a new topic that needs more attention. And so I think there's a way uh, to incorporate that. Um, when, when we talk about uh, the digital governance piece, you know, I wonder if there's a way to tie in a broader AI conversation into that. Um, certainly AI is having its own governance debate, but that has to be you know, kind of considered in the context of the existing framework and, and the way the existing framework is evolving. So when you're thinking about things like the Global Digital Compact or WSIS or uh, the MAC or the IGF or some of this, part of what we're, we need to consider is, is how those fora 
are addressing uh, artificial intelligence issues and kind of these new technologies come along. So I wonder if there's an opportunity for, you know, the future of digital te uh, governance in, in the age of AI or something like that as another main session topic that can kind of tie different threads together. Thanks. Um, can you just change that to, a, or if you can put in the corner that J, call him J. Um, gender, cybersecurity, the next one, uh, GDC slash digital governance, and then the next one is sustainability, and then we have AI, which may actually go on to the third line, right? And just put the numbers. Uh, GDC slash digital governance, and Justin just said that we could maybe join it together with AI, right? I I, I would not suggest trying to do GDC okay. digital governance AI. No, no, altogether. no. I just I, I think that, here. I think there's a way to do digital governance and AI together, or potentially there's a way to do GDC and digital governance together. I don't. I, I think it's too much to try to do. Uh, really. No, uh, my main thought was maybe GDC could be its own thing because it's something that's very pertinent and we will be just coming out of the ministerial meeting. So it could take up that whole slot yeah. by itself. And then we have another one with the digital governance because, as you said, it was very important to just have a discussion on everything that's happening now and how that's going to shape the future of IG or DG, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, not, not to jump, just to respond to that, my proposal was that GDC as a standalone and then maybe a digital governance in the age of AI or, you know, kind of considering the new AI or something that brings AI into that governance oh, okay. conversation. Can we have digital governance in the age of that, AI? That was the thought, but, but again. Nope, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's put G Okay, uh, for the purposes of this conversation as of now, let's put GDC as number six then. And then um, Yes, um, we have digital governance as a standalone, right? Uh, because that's the thing. And then we have GDC as a standalone. At the moment, on my piece of paper, I had it as a slash. So these are the current, what we are, um, yeah. Yeah, considering at the moment. We're not saying we're stuck with those. This is just where I am at. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm. It's fine. Peace had her hand up as well. So, um, main session again. Main sessions. Um, I I just wanted to relay some of the comments on the chat actually because I think it was Henriette that suggested yesterday on the during the intersessional <laughs> discussion that maybe it would be good to have kind of a, a systematic and actually a, a deep discussion with the community about digital governance and maybe the future of the IGF as kind of a town hall participative kind of discussion. So maybe we can take that suggestion up um, as something for the digital governance um, debate we're discussing, but also she posted on the chat that, um, back to the cybersecurity chat, human centric and human rights based approach to cybersecurity is pretty much the discussion at the OEWG level at this moment. So my question would be, can this be the approach suggested to the BPF um, cybersecurity this year so we can ensure we have enough, enough slots for each of this, like, the topics that we're listing? Because as it is right now, we, we're probably going like, to like, leave at least one out. And to me, cybersecurity is the one that's repeated. So 
just yeah. I mean, do we have a representative of that? The uh, BPF? The BPF? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can you answer that question? Yes. Um, you wouldn't have my member and BPF co-facilitator. I think the, um, at the beginning of the year, the BPF has already submitted to the MAG the, the, the work we would like to do this year. And the, and the aim of the main stations and the BPF on cybersecurity is really different. The, the BPF will rise uh, events and doing a research paper on the last famous events with a, a first person narratives. So I don't think it's really, it's not really the aim of the main stations. It's a research, it's a result of a, it's a, result of a research of, uh, of a, long, a year long research. So it's not, it's not the main station. Amrita, for the record, cybersecurity is pretty vast, as in they are talking about certain um, uh, developments which you are tracking, events you are tracking, right? And they are reporting on it. But cybersecurity per se has many more things. And what, um, as in I was suggesting, is we look at cybersecurity from the rights or the gender lenses or uh, issues of that kind, So, which is completely different from what the different uh, multilateral platforms are discussing. So I don't think we should see cybersecurity through just one lens. BPF is not even doing 1% of what cybersecurity is. Okay, peace. Peace here, MAG member, for record. Thank you, Paul. I am looking at sustainability, and I'm wondering if we're looking at sustainability and uh, environment, because I think it's very important for us to look at environmental justice, you know, looking at issues of e-waste management, looking at the regulations around that. I think it's a very crucial topic. So if we put sustainability, are we thinking about environmental justice? In our pubs theme, we had it as environment, sustainability and environmental, how do you call it? Yeah, environment. So I want to bring to our attention that it's really crucial for us to discuss environmental justice. Thank you. Adam. I'm Rita pretty much said what I wanted to say, so thank you, no. And Elisa? Well, Abdul Rahman has been there. Uh, okay. Oh, he's the next in line, I hope. Um, so this is Elisa here before the record. Um, I would like the people who would want to have a, a main session on cybersecurity and the BPF on cybersecurity to be slightly more precise on which two exact topics they would like to have with regards to cybersecurity, because to me it's too vague at the moment to have both. Let me just respond to Alicia. So, Alicia, I think what was being discussed now is we agree on topics and then the groups work on things. But um, what uh, the BPF is going to do is basically present on what they have been doing. That's what their mandate is. Um, and that's what they discuss. And uh, on cybersecurity, what I was suggesting is we look at the rights-based approach, the gender aspects, or even how it is affecting marginalized communities, etc. But obviously, it is up to everyone to discuss because that's different. And what my limited understanding is, it's different. Justin? Oh, Abdul Rahim. I didn't see your. Um, oh, you have to wave it. Yeah. Abdul Rahman for record, Mag member. So uh, just, just from other angle about my session. I remember in, in, in our last meeting in Vienna where there is almost 20 plus organization came and, and present their work and they're willing to be 
part of IGF, uh, as, as I remember on, on that meeting. So I was wondering, um, just throwing the idea, maybe we need to reserve, or maybe it will be a good idea if we reserve one main session uh, in consultation with these entities that they show interest and they want uh, to show um, yeah, any, uh, a, lot, a lot of value that they are doing in, in, in the arena of internet governance. So might be uh, one of the main sessions that reserve in a consultation with those organizations uh, and, and try to, if, if, if they have something to, to present or something value to, to the community, it might be a good idea. And it's also show yeah, any respect for the effort and, and uh, that they, they, they are coming to us and to, they want to become closer to IGF. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Suda. Um, Justin, then you turn. Um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think part of the, the challenge is just that the first two topics, maybe even the first three, um, they're important, and I actually think that they should be main sessions. It's just It just seems too simplistic for an IGF discussion. Uh, you know, I think that there's some things that should be open-ended, but at this point in our conversation about gender or about cybersecurity, we need to target it a little bit. Um, it's the IGF. It's not, you know, some other forum where we're just broadly scratching the surface of these things. Um, so I think that, you know, just on the first two, again, back to the proposal, I think that there is a very important conversation happening around the impact of digital platforms, of digital technologies, of online spaces towards creating harms or risks or, you know, whatever you want to call it, violence uh, against women, girls, uh, traditionally marginalized groups. There's a, there's a list, <laughs> depending on uh, where you're looking, of, of, of that. And I think that that could be a very timely and important conversation for the IGF to focus on, on uh, security, safety and security really, as it uh, within the, the gender um, and maybe gender and, and uh, you know, traditionally vulnerable groups or something like that conversation. I, so, you know, that's not to say that this, another topic can't be on cybersecurity, another gender issue, but I wonder if one of those, uh, there would be support for having it on countering technology facilitated gender-based violence or, you know, countering online harms for women, girls, and vulnerable groups or something uh, along those lines. Thank you. Uta? Yes, thank you for giving me the floor again as a non-MAC member. I'm wondering why human rights are not featuring among the issues for main sessions. It was mentioned that it is related to cybersecurity but from yesterday's intersessional, uh, intersessional event, we've learned that it is a cross-cutting issue for all the areas and all the sub-themes we have this year. So I'm wondering whether we should identify that it's related to the six that are already mentioned there, to all six, or maybe is it more related to gender because gender equality is a human right? Is it more related to cybersecurity? Because so all of them, and that Sorry, then that everything. should be yeah. a precondition to the main session that human rights are addressed in all these main sessions. A rights-based approach. That's what I would like to suggest. Uh, Carol. I just wanted to bounce off what Justin was saying um, to encapsulate um, the different areas. The, one of the big things in cybersecurity is awareness and safety. Uh, before persons and tech groups, they were saying, okay, we, we have this secure, we, we're looking at this type of encryption, that, so on and so forth. But what, we, what we're finding is that People just need to be aware because no matter how much encryption this other that is given, then there's a human part of it. I think that's what Justin was trying to get at. What's the human look at, at cybersecurity in terms of safety and awareness from a human approach? I'm not sure, Justin, hopefully. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chair. Walter Observer, also responding to Justin. 
Well, I said yesterday on the public core of the internet that the internet runs on internet standards and that they're almost not recognized by most governments in the world for what they are, the basic core of the internet. And if that is attacked 24 hours a day, it makes our world insecure and unsafe for almost all internet users and indiscriminately who that user is from a government to an individual like myself. So is it an idea to host the main session around the public core of the internet, which will move the discussion also from mitigating problems on the internet towards prevention of problems on the internet? Because it would be about defending these internet standards, but also by deploying these internet standards where everybody in the world that needs to deploy them. So that's a suggestion. Thank you. And I have to leave for the airport. But thank you for having me and sharing my ideas. And see you in Kyoto. Thank you. Have a safe trip. Um, I'm Rita. Thank you. As in, I do agree with what Justin is saying. These are not standalone topics. They are cross-cutting. And we need to look at them together, not as gender cybersecurity or AI or something, we may want to marry them to reduce the number of sessions because that adds value. Uh, for example, if you're looking at, and I agree with you, Ter, we need the human rights lens when we're looking. For example, in cybersecurity, if you're looking at how technologies are kind of affecting you know, certain communities or the violence against certain communities, race, et cetera, um, we, and that brings the rights approach also there and the gender approach. Similarly, if we are looking at something on AI, we may want to look at it creatively um, with the gender lens and also the other aspects. So perhaps we may want to, if people are not convinced with certain things, perhaps at least at a broader level, we can come that, okay, in the main session this on cybersecurity, this is the aspect which will be looked at uh, in uh, and AI, we are looking at this aspect. Um, so that will at least, if not satisfy everyone, bring everyone at some level. You and Bruna. Gonna be the, maybe the disagreeing voice again. Because <laughs> I think the way we're heading, we're creating some kind of, let's say, disparity between the sub-teams. We might have two sessions for cyber, we might have three sessions for AI, and that's not really fair considering we have eight sub-themes. So my point would be like maybe Justin, I, I like the suggestion, the, the direction Justin is heading because there is no discussion there at least. Um, there is a small one um, on misinformation, but maybe we can do one session on online harms and um, digital platform governance with a human rights based approach where we could discuss both um, governance and cybersecurity aspects um, or anything that comes out of that. Um, I'm not too sure on AI again because I think um, we might have the PNAI already addressing this and we already have the host, co host country focus on this topic too. So wouldn't it be more fair for us to like give space to another of the sub themes that it's probably being forgotten um, in all of this? And um, because, again, again, like, I understand what you said, Amrita, like a lot of these discussions are very different, but the same happens for AI, the same happens for human rights. And last year, we kind of like put human rights and access together in the same basket, but the main session was mostly about access and not about human rights. So we kind of tend to oversee or forget some of this really relevant debates. Um, and then I'm a little bit concerned with the, the disparity. So yeah, just putting this on the record. Thank you. Uh, sorry, yeah, I mean, there's two approaches to this, right? We have a human rights session, or we make sure that everything that's being discussed is from a rights perspective. Right. I thought we were leaning towards everything being discussed being from a rights perspective. Mm -hmm. um, yes, please. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Nima Lugangira, Mag Member. Yeah. I just want to um, come in from where you just left off, Chengatai. I think it's it's not a guarantee that you know we might say that everything should be discussed from a human rights center, but that's not a guarantee that that will be the case. And I'm also leaning towards the opinion that um, Elono made. I think it will be good to have you know a specific um, standalone amongst the main sessions on human rights per se because a lot of the things on internet governance, you know, they have a big impact and there's a big opportunity in terms of on, on, on the human rights. So uh, because the artificial intelligence is already on the policy network, they have, like they're already featured elsewhere, we can consider how to make that balance so that also human rights features prominently um, there. Thank you. Uh, Justin Suki. Um, uh, thank you. Just just responding to uh, one comment from Baruna on the AI. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think we want to find the right balance. I also kind of do think that this is just such a conversation um, that we want to make sure that IGF is responsive. So finding that balance between not, um, you know, being unbalanced in the IGF agenda versus making sure we are responding to that. I do wonder, going back to my uh, co previous comments about the UN Open Forum. So last year, that was interesting, but it was interesting because all the UN agencies that participated were pretty much talking about the Global Digital Compact. It was a discussion about the Global Digital Compact. And, and so it kind of raises the question, what is that for? And I don't think it is an, should be an open forum that can come talk about connectivity work or space work or you know just whatever. I think it should be focused and, and you know, maybe an interesting conversation, again, if it's dynamic uh, and there's opportunity for feedback, is the UN Open Forum on activities related to AI. Because there's been a lot of conversations by a lot of different UN entities on work they're doing on AI. And I'm not sure that it's always being kind of discussed openly. It's just kind of thrown out there. So, you know, one suggestion might be instead of a main session on AI, given some of the other conversations, uh, we encourage the UN Open Forum to be dynamic uh, and then also to focus on activities related to AI, which is a very kind of timely conversation. Thanks. Particularly since I believe this is right after the UN plans to launch an advisory board on AI um, at the Secretary General level. So, Suki? Um, yes, I, I'm... I mean, I, I would still go for AI as a topic for a main session because I think AI has so many facets and uh, as long as we don't know what the high level panel will discuss upon and also um, the, the policy network, I, was, I would still stick to that because AI is so huge. I mean, the impact of AI will be greater than anything else what we have experienced so far. There are so many ongoing discussions, for instance, the EU Act on AI. I mean, uh, um, audit uh, systems uh, um, uh, proposed by private sector like Facebook and so on. It has so many aspects that we could look into. And I think that it would be a good signal to show that uh, Internet Governance Forum is really tackling the topics that uh, are being discussed uh, worldwide. Carol. Okay, I think Justin and Suki have covered what I was about to say. If we want to remain, um, Justin's word, responsive, uh, my word, relevant, we need to keep AI in there. Um, it is massive. It is, it is going to affect, every, well, it started to affect everybody's lives, and it has to be discussed um, people have to um, have, be given the forum to do the discussion. So I don't think it's a good idea to remove AI. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to echo what Carol just said. I think um, we might underestimate how cross-cutting AI will be or is already. And um, also the point on having it under... I think Justin said having it under the UN Open Forum, 
I, I would still maintain um, a multi-stakeholder dialogue on AI um, instead of um, under UN uh, Open Forum. Thank you, Nima. Um, thank you, uh, Nima Lugangir again, Mag, Mag member. I think all of us agree that artificial intelligence is, is important, and especially even for myself, coming from an African perspective, artificial intelligence is an important discussion. But here also we have to look at the balance and fairness across the different blocks. Currently, I think AI has three sessions already, if I'm not mistaken. I think there are three. There are three. So let me, let me finish. So if AI has three sessions, then there should be consensus somewhere to drop some of the sessions and give an opportunity for other thematic areas to get an extra session. You know, because then it's, it's becoming like they, they can't ha we can't have it all just on one because they're equally, because even when you mention, for example, human rights, human rights can also be discussed with an AI included in human rights. So it's not, a, it's, so, it's not, so it's not like if we put human rights there, AI won't be featured because AI also has an impact on human rights. But to have AI have three sessions, I think that's not fair. So somehow we should discuss that and see um, what can be done there and what other thematic area can have an additional session. For example, we can talk about, you know, um, tech facilitated gender-based violence, that's a huge topic as well. Even the UN is discussing it, UNFPA is discussing it. So I, I think we need to find a balance on this topic. Uh, thanks, Nema. So as people speak, can we see whether or not we can join, if you agree, um, AI with something else? Chris, I'm, uh, AI and what? Sorry, but, I'm, if I AI and human rights, I, AI. I need something to put up there. Can I? I can I? Yeah. Okay, we do have a kind of a list, and sorry for just throwing that out there. But <laughs> let's do this, and then at the end. If we can have AI in human rights or AI and something, but let's get very quickly. Yeah. Um, Mark member, I, I think AI and human rights would be would, would be fundamental because again, a lot of countries um, across the globe actually are calling for maybe um, policies on AI, and um, for the most part, they don't actually actually understand in it. So I think if you put AI, and for the most part, people are pointing to AI and actual and human rights. So I think AI and human rights would be a really very good, you know, very good area that we can actually discuss. Okay, uh, let's do it in order. Uh, Chris, Adam, Amrita, uh, Justin. So, Chris Buckridge. And uh, Bruna. Chris Buckridge, Mag member, Tech Community. Um, I'm. I don't have much of a horse in this race, so I'm, I'm not super committed to this, but just throwing it out there. I, I do think Carol and Justin are right that I think AI is a very big issue here and the IGF needs to engage with it in a very serious way. Why don't we make one day AI day? Um, I, I think there is a huge um, diversity of issues that AI raises and I think if we were to say, and this is a random idea, feel free to reject, but if we were to say day two was a mini AI conference in the main plenary room, and we had a number of different sessions, AI focused that could look at different aspects of the AI discussion, essentially, yeah. And, and I mean, that would free up the rest of the week, obviously, for other issues. I'm not saying we should have AI in those other, those other days, but it would also give us something as a MAG, as an IGF secretariat, as a community to latch on to as a sort of marketing effort as well to say there is this focused AI discussion for those of you who are seeing AI as a, a big issue to engage with. Um, yeah, so it, it's a little the opposite direction that we were perhaps moving, but maybe also it, it 
fits in with that in terms of integrating AI into other discussions about human rights, about, yeah. Anyway, just a random idea, but yeah, hopefully thought provoking. Adam? Thanks. Um, that's a, I think that's a really interesting idea because it, I was going to go back sort of in time and Chris has taken us nicely forward with that suggestion. But what I was going to, what I will say is that in the main session we had last year on AI, we had a number of international organizations talking about the work that they were doing on principles and norms, on implementation, on standards. And there was a suggestion at the end that a role for the IGF, which fits with some of the work we've been thinking about, the sounding boards and how does the IGF mesh with the work of the Global Digital Compact, et cetera, that the IGF could be used as a place where norms, standards, principles, implementation, people came to have that reviewed or have that looked at, to have progress with principles, are they being upheld, etc. The IGF as a global multi-stakeholder forum could be used in that way. So it'd be kind of interesting to fit that quite strategic role for the IGF with a discussion, as Chris has just mentioned, and it gels with all the ideas of IGF and human rights and IGF and gender-related issues and security, etc. But it gives us a role, and I think we should be thinking about what the, the IGF can and should be doing in this space and the one thing we can do, better than anywhere else, is bring in multi-stakeholder, global points of view and eyes to review things like principles, norms, implementation, standards, good practice, etc. So then that would build off what we said last year, and it's always nice to build off what we said in the previous year. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, read on. Thank you. Um, as in Chris's idea is interesting, only thing in that is if, for example, we bring all the AI workshops that day or even from the other themes, if there is some AI aspect into it, the, uh, there are chances that people interested in the AI discussion may not be able to attend all the sessions. So that, that is the flip side. Else, if we have an AI day, it will generate that kind of a interest from people. So that's something that's a calculated risk if we want to take it or we do not want to take it. Um, on the A, it was the AI, right, Bruna, we were talking about. Um, I would suggest that when we're talking about AI, we just don't talk about human rights. The reason being, uh, at the PNAI, we have three subtracts, subtracts which are working. One is on interoperability, one is on gender and race, and the other is on sustainability. So um, they are looking at it from those lenses. So if that those aspects are being discussed there, perhaps what um, even Justin was mentioning that we look at, a, uh, you know, we look at, or even what Adam was saying, we look at the norms, we look at ethics, or even we look at the, you know, the rights-based, uh, or, you know, certain other things, the violence or something, perhaps may be good so that we do not replicate the discussion, but we bring another aspect of it uh, here. So I just thought I'd give you a background of what the PNEI is doing so that um, something else can be looked at it. Uh, and I like Chris's idea, it's just that perhaps the Secretariat would also have to see how many, um, amongst the all sessions which we have, uh, have an AI balance, not only the AI workshops of 10. Justin? Um, thank you, yeah, just on, um... I, I really like the proposal for, you know, a day. I, I don't think that it necessarily changes the agenda and, and you know, kind of the number of slots once we once we agree to that. But but having a focus day, I think, actually, is a really good idea because I, I do think that that we are sort of marketing the IEGF to the global community as a place to come talk about these issues. I think just last week here in Geneva, the AI for Good meeting across the street had like 5,000 uh, registered participants or something like that. There is just an interest in talking about these issues. 
And if we want the IGF, which I think most of, I think all of us do, to be a four to have those discussions, we need to think about innovative way to have a conversation about that really kind of current issues. Um, and then just on the, uh, the proposal, I guess it is, whether AI and human rights or a human rights based approach to AI, I think that could be a very good topic uh, and, and really a good way to kind of, again, add an element to the discussion so it's not just open ended, but it's focused on a certain uh, policy aspect of these, um, you know, kind of broader tech policy issues. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Um, again, going to insist on the same point because I'm afraid we're becoming like we're turning into some like subset of AI for good. We already have 13 approved workshops on AI. We already have um, one surprise session on AI. We have a PN AI session and we're discussing a third main session on AI. Is it really that much more important than data governance, than human rights as a standalone debate as data privacy and data protection or anything related to gender, disinformation, freedom of expression. It's really like, it is a relevant topic. We're all discussing this as part of the human, as, as like any of us in this room is a human rights activist to some extent and we have all been discussing AI, but I, I just don't think it should be the exclusive focus um, for it because it seems like it for now. Like we're talking about 16 sessions for now, maybe more, but I, I really don't think it should be the way forward. So maybe let's just try to decide on whether we want to have a PNAI and a May session on AI, because I do think that's an, a very unnecessary duplication. Um, and we have some much more relevant discussions to have on child protection and any other stuff. So that's it. Okay, Chris. Okay. Um, this is uh, Carol um, Roach, uh, my member. Uh, Bruno asked the question, is it that important? Yes, it is that important because it touches on everything that you've said. It touches on gender, it touches on child protection, it touches on everything. Now with the PNAI, we have to narrow down as um, Amrita indicated. Mm -hmm. We had to narrow the, the scope because we are limited to X amount of pages. And trust me, AI is more than the 10 pages that we, we're going to have to give. And um, you, you, you're talking about AI having all of these different um, sessions. All the other ones have diff uh, equal sessions as well. So, you know, we'll... We were given, um, AI was given a section, so of course you'll have that amount of things in there. But AI is relevant and it is, you just cannot have a main session on AI. It's just. Chris. I think it's a bullet. Uh, Chris Buckridge, MAG member, Tech Community. Um, so a couple of points. I, I think Amrita raised the point before, and I just wanted to clarify. I'm in the not very well-considered idea that I was having. I was only thinking about main sessions. I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to bring all AI-related workshops onto the same day. And in fact, I would also, if you have the workshops spread out across the week, that also gives the sort of AI hardcore, diehard people reason to stay for the rest of the week rather than just fly in, fly out. Um, I, I mean, I, th I think to the points Bruno was making, I, I, I think these are not either or topics, like human rights and AI are not two either or topics. AI, human rights is an aspect of the discussion we have around AI. So I think this is not about excluding or minimizing those discussions about access or data governance or um, human rights at the expense of AI. I think it's in the interest of, of creating a, a sort of conference that is dialing into the sort of uh, zeitgeist, um, putting those discussions of human rights and data governance and trust, et cetera, 
into a context of AI for one day of the conference that can maybe be um, pitched in a successful way to stakeholders around the world. Um, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I mean, I'm with Carol and um, I mean, thank you very much, Amrita, that you also pointed out that uh, the, the public um, policy network is working on the three uh, um, uh, sub themes. And um, as long as we don't know what the what the focus will be on the high level discussion and also the policy network, I mean, I think we shouldn't discuss now whether it should be AI plus human rights. But I'm still for keeping AI as a main session because there is a need for the discussion on AI. I mean, it shows also in the amount of workshops that have been submitted on this theme. And I also think that, uh, I mean, AI is became mainstream with ChatGPT. It's now in, I mean, this is real. This is not like blockchain that that uh, uh, affects only a few people who are uh, aware of uh, this technology. But I think AI is really changing the way everything that we are doing, the education sector. Um, students will study differently in future, the labor market, uh, the economy, everything. So it's, it's so broad and no one has a real understanding of the impact AI will have on humanity in general. So I think it's imperative that we keep it as a main session, although we already have 16 workshops and so on other sessions on that. But I think it's only a re reflection of what people would like to discuss also at the IGF. Thank you very much, Chair. This is Anya from the IGF Secretariat, but speaking in my capacity as the NRI's focal point, I think I've informed the MAG on one of our, your online meetings, but I just would like to confirm for the record that we have uh, run in support to the network of the NRI processes extensive consultations on what could be the focus of the NRI's main session. And uh, the decision was that it, could, it should focus on data governance in the context of trusted internet. So I just want to bring this input in, in case uh, you will continue discussing, especially mentioning the data governance so we don't duplicate the efforts. And also remind of the fact that the NRI's main session has been approved in 2016 as a modality of cooperation between the MAG and the NRIs. So uh, we really encourage all the MAG members to join the preparatory process, to work with the NRIs on equal footing, uh, respecting the NRI modalities, and to develop this session together. The format of this session um, that's been already under planning will be, um, I think, significantly different than in previous years because it will focus primarily on getting experts from different regions affiliated with the NRIs, but a very limited number, and then it would go into an inclusive discussion. So certainly Meg's advice here is uh, much appreciated. Thank you. Chris. Thanks, Paul, and thanks, Anya, for that um, update. I mean, I, I, the NRI session um, is, is certainly something uh, I think it's good for us to get into as the MAG in terms of what that session is. Um, and I, I, I know it's, it's been there as a sort of modality for a number of years now. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I, I'm still certainly a little fuzzy on what the intent there is. I mean, I think an NRI session which is focused around discussions of how do NRIs work effectively, what's the sort of building communities, um, at making sure that there is that sort of activity at that level and, and how interaction can occur beyond just the global IGF but also at the sort of the level of NRI to NRI is really useful. If, if it's more sort of subject matter focused like a discussion of AI or a discussion of concerns around, um, I, I don't know, IoT, um, something, then I'm a little fuzzy on why the NRIs are the ones convening that rather than just the IGF itself convening that. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I'm a little, little fuzzy on that. So if there's any sort of further insight, that would be very useful. Um, thanks. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, there's there's a lot of issues that really the IGF deals with every year. And part of what we do in the MAG is just tailor the conversation to the relevant aspects of that. 
So things like gender and security and inclusion. I mean, these are human rights. These are cross-cutting issues that we've talked about for years. I think what's the relevant, and I think that's where the AI comes, is like it's a very relevant conversation to have some of those broader discussions. So again, I think you know something like a human-centric approach to AI or a human rights-based approach to AI brings in one of the sub-themes to that conversation uh, and makes it relevant and important now. But looking at kind of the other sub-themes, I wonder if there's other opportunities to do that. And, and I'm looking at, you know, we have as a sub-theme digital divides and inclusion, and up at the top there's, a, you know, a, a desire to have a session on gender. And I wonder if there's an opportunity there to have a conversation on gender digital divides and promoting digital inclusion, which I think gets to, you know, empowering um, uh, different, uh, you know, users, different groups to, like, be able to access digital technologies in the Internet. So, you know, just kind of, again, trying to, to make the main sessions interesting and pertinent and relevant, um, but also aligned with this, the sub-themes. I wonder if the gender could be something like gender digital vibe and digital inclusion. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I know we're uh, kind of can repeating. I still think that it's it's a very current topic, but if it's, I'm just trying to help find the uh, the sub themes and uh, align them with what the desires in the room are. <coughs> Thanks. Just to say, it was a BPF focus a few years ago, gender divides yeah. and access, and we also had a main session on that. So. I'm afraid, like, what, what, I mean, it's not a new issue, it's not going to be solved anytime, like, soon, but isn't there a new approach on gender discussions um, that we should be taking? Like, if we're so keen on AI, why not AI and bias to both female LGBTQIA plus um, communities and um, other minorities? Um, we're not having any look upon that, but, I mean, it just seems we're going in rounds and not really deciding and we're still having 16 sessions on AI. Um, I mean, Amrita already stressed out that there are three different sub-themes under the policy network. And as I said also before, I suggested that we shouldn't discuss now the, the focus of the AI main session as long as we don't know what is being discussed then in the high level uh, discussion as well as in the policy network. I mean, I think we have to make a decision on whether we keep AI and elaborate on the, on the focus uh, uh, um, of the session at a later stage, because we can't do it at the moment. We are just reminded that we have 11 minutes to go before we have to break. And um, it would be good if we can get the uh, areas of focus that we have. We have six at the moment. Is it at all a possibility that we can have five? A big partner? Yes, yes. So can we merge one? Can we not? It's, this is just see if. Uh, yes, please, Nema. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Nema Gangir, MAG member. Um, with all due respect, and I'm fully aligned on the importance of AI. But I still say that to have more than about 13 sessions on AI, I mean, different sessions on AI, uh, policy network on AI, again on the main session of AI. While, yes, AI is, is critical, but it doesn't mean, it, it's, it's as if when, it's like when COVID came, it didn't mean that all other, all other diseases disappeared or they became less important. So... We, we have to somehow find consensus. Uh, yes. But we cannot force that AI should have, each and every session should be around AI as it is right now. It seems as if this is turning into an AI, you know, uh, IGF 2023. 20, Thank you. No, uh, thanks, Nema. I do understand where you're coming from. And yes, there's two sides of, of um, looking at it. There's a call for focus. Uh, this can be one of our focus points. And of course, there's a call for more diversity. That means having more stuff from the smog is bored. Is that how I said? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so we can be, the focus is having different uh, sessions on different aspects of AI and the having it more broad, of course, is the other thing. So we lose that focus, but again, this is a choice that we do have to make, um, if not in this session, well, hopefully in this session, then overnight. Adam. Just to, um, thanks, Changatai. Just to go back, why would we want to um, focus on five, which I know was on your original plan, but I think we opened up by saying we didn't quite agree with your original plan. Um, so could we leave it at six or more and, and perhaps stick to the notion that the best practice forum on cybersecurity, which Peace spoke about, and, and you know, it, it sounds like the work that they're doing is not the type of thing you'd have in a main session. It sounds like a workshop where you're reporting on different incidents and so on, and so as I understand it, but it doesn't really matter, but, you know, I think a We've had ideas for a better, for cybersecurity and gender aspects, et cetera. So I, I don't see any particular no, reason mean, why we'd want mm -hmm. to focus back on five. That's what I'm saying. No, that would be an option, but I... So I wouldn't bother doing I that. I don't see that there's an agreement that we should remove one of the... Or any of them. Any of them. I don't or, see an agreement any of them, that but we yeah, but that doesn't mean any we have, of them. Yes, but so in the same way, it doesn't mean place. we have to focus on five, yeah. does it? Because then you're removing the other options. So, uh, I mean, I would just leave it with, if it's seven, then it's seven, and the MAG can continue its discussion on the list. Um, oh, the other request is, when we do this, could we not immediately break into subgroups on the main sessions, but keep it in the MAG plenary so that we can have this discussion that moves across the themes so that we can think about what the, you know, where the, the commonalities are and, and where we can sort of feed between the two sessions. Because if we break immediately into sub mailing lists, we kind of lose any, any synergy. So please, let's not do that. Let's please stay with the MAG list as a whole. Okay, now it's compromise time. Uh, so I think we need to find some middle ground at this point of time. If people think AI is too much, uh, what is not too much? We need to come to that. Uh, let's get into that aspect. Say, for example, we are saying we don't, and what we have said is it's not per se AI. We are trying to look at two, three aspects together. Um, so if we are saying AI is overexposed, um, though personally I do not think because even for a developing country that's a huge thing coming because AI has been imposed, it is going into your access part, it is going into your disinformation, it's going into all aspects which we do not even understand. Uh, so that's a concern, but if we are saying, okay, we don't want a main session AI, let me give that benefit of doubt. Uh, at this time, and we are saying, okay, when we are talking about gender, we are bringing in, uh, you know, when we are talking cybersecurity, we are bringing in rights, etc. What is it we want there, which we feel is, um, will actually not tilt the balance, but will bring some equity into this entire discussion? As in, if I may also saying we are removing AI from here because it's overexposed, what is it we want to bring in there, which will kind of take, um, the issue is not that AI is being discussed. The issue is the impact it has on various aspects. It could be rights. It could be access also, um, the, you know, the way you use a device. Because as it is mentioned, it's cross-cutting. So uh, even language for non-English speaking people, there is a huge issue out there. When we are talking about access and we want everyone to be connected, the world is not connected. Um, so I, I think those are issues which is even important from the uh, access uh, policy network part, etc. So if we want to remove AI, what is it we want there? Um, yes, I mean, I, I was thinking of merging six and four, digital governance and GDC, if this would be possible. G, uh, uh, six and four, digital governance and GDC, if we could merge these two. That's merging digital governance and the GDC. Okay, let's hear what uh, Justin and Bruna has to say, and Chris then. 
No, just because I think at this point, everybody's more or less defending its own points and agenda. Nobody in this room needs to be schooled on the relevance of AI, on how it's the zeitgeist of our like um, spaces or anything of the sort. We all understand it's a relevant issue and it's probably why we have 13 pre-approved workshops instead of six for sustainability or five for fragmentation. It's already clear in the message um, for everybody here. And I mean, for anyone asking, I'm not a hater on AI. I'm, I just think that turns out we have far more relevant discussions that should be conveyed in the IGF agenda as the global forum it actually is. And on the state of the art of, of a lot of AI discussions, there is some sort of um, communities, groups, countries being left out of the conversation, which I don't think we can necessarily mitigate from this space. There's a lot of civil society organizations that don't necessarily trust on spaces like AI for Good because of its of the space it's it's built from and, and things like that. So, I mean, I would maybe just follow with um, two sessions on AI, that being the PNAI or a main slot for AI that's joint with the PNAI and um, the opening session, the surprise one, because I, I really don't think um, how different can the approaches be? And I mean, nice, yeah, yeah. That just, just wrap up. It's very nice that the PNAI has three main streams. Um, the PNIF also has, but I'm not here advocating for three sessions on fragmentation because we have three different working groups. Um, that's the point. And it's not really fair with the agenda. So. And one last thing, um, very last thing, I, I think we still need to convey human rights on the agenda somehow and actually like set whether we are using this as a cross-cutting um, topic or if we're doing as um, Justin suggested, like maybe gender and human rights or um, a human rights based approach to cybersecurity because I think we had two different suggestions on the table and um, would be good to decide on that. Justin. Um, thanks. Yeah, just, just on AI, I mean, I, I have to respectfully disagree. I, I just, at a time when the UN Secretary General is out talking about creating new bodies and, and new entities, and, and tech leaders are talking about, you know, the end of humanity. Uh, I mean, I, I think a lot of this is overblown, but it just, the, the IGF, it, it, it will be, I think it has to be more AI focused this year than at other times. And, and I think in the workshops, but also in the main sessions. And I, you know, I, I think we won't balance, but um, we, we always accept that there's not everything is perfectly equal. Balance is just trying to find what's appropriate for the time and space. I, I, I do think that you know, targeting AI again could be useful to bring in some other theme to it. So it's not just a conversation about AI. Um, on GDC and digital governance, I mean, you know, at this point, I think that we're all trying to find flexibility. I think it's a mistake to, to try to lump those together. The GDC is kind of a, a, a very, uh, there's a lot of ambition behind that from the UN, uh, from the proponents of that. And we're at a time where I think it really needs a multi-stakeholder lens. This body put a letter forward, which was kind of unprecedented, on the GDC to be a sounding board. Um, so it would be a, strange not to have, if the co-facilitators are coming and the secretariat's there, and we've really spent a lot of this year talking about it, I wouldn't dilute that conversation. I think there needs to be a robust conversation about uh, the GDC. Now, if that means that, that we need to drop digital governance, I, I, you know, f so be it. But I think there's a lot of other conversations that are happening, like WISIS Plus 20, like UNESCO's work, like other parts of our common agenda, things that are happening around the world that deserve a, a conversation by AGF. But, but I would, I mean, my recommendation would be to drop digital governance uh, before trying to um, dilute the conversation around uh, the GDC, just because of the moment in time when, when there's an opportunity there. And then just lastly, I mean, we still have one and two, and, and I proposed earlier uh, uh, maybe a way forward for combining those uh, and that we have a, a conversation that is focused on online harms or countering tech facilitated gender-based violence. If we're looking at, you know, ways to kind of make this relevant and, and, you know, find space on it, 
I still think that that is a, a, a viable option to merge one and two uh, that, that then frees up another spot for another topic or, you know, helps us get closer to what's <laughs> acceptable within the agenda. Thank you. Chris and Carol. Ben Neymar. Yep. Um, Chris Buckridge, Tech Community Mag member. Um, I, yeah, I'm, AI is not really my thing, so I'm not actually committed to any, any of this exactly. Um, I think what I see in the AI discussion is an opportunity to really focus our outreach and our engagement with Zeitgeist, as, as Bruno said. So, I mean, if, uh, I, if we do look to compromise, I mean, maybe it's not a whole day, but maybe it's a half day or something. But if it's something that we can package a little more as like there is going to be this dedicated point or period in, in the IGF which is going to be focused on AI, I think that's something of value to us in a marketing and communication capacity. Um, so I would only say let's think in those terms maybe a little um, in, in whatever we come up with. Okay. Okay, so we, if we're talking compromise, uh, maybe reduce the number of workshops, but not to have a main session on AI. I, 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 don't, think it's good. I don't think it's good for the um, IGF. But I, I don't know. Is that an option to reduce the amount of workshops with AI? Uh, Chris and Carol, what do you think about the dropping of digital governance? Pardon? Um, well, to tell you the truth, a lot of those other topics have governance or should be talking about governance because that's, that's the way to try to resolve issues. So if we ensure that governance is covered in those other topics, then yes, because governance really doesn't stand on its own. Governance comes about because of all these other things. So sure, Justin um, has a point. Um, it could be um, dropped if we ensure, because mo mo all these other topics will talk about governance, the policies that you may need, the legislation you would need, the capacity you would need, all of those things will come back into each one of those topics. AI will talk about it. Um, Cybersecurity will talk about it. Uh, of course, GDC. So yeah, maybe digital governance you can't talk digital governance without mentioning all the others. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just a bit concerned about our technical person here. Maybe he, he wants to go home soon-ish. So uh, just Chris, a couple of dropping digital governance sentence. Yeah, I, I mean, I was reasonably convinced by Justin's intervention earlier in, in noting that we have an opportunity to engage quite substantively on the GDC, so we probably shouldn't dilute that with a more wide-ranging discussion of digital governance. I think we need to have some discussion of digital governance in the agenda and looking to sort of the WISIS process and the, the sort of renewal process that's going on. Um, and also just to the broader discussion of, of sort of structures and approaches that are, are being picked up and whether that's sustainable or wise. Um, so I, I mean, I think that's something that warrants some time in the main room, but whether it's in the UN Open Forum or, or some other space, I don't have a strong view. Uh, Nima Nsuki, quickly, please. Thank you. Um, Nima Lugangira, very quickly. Uh, I think definitely we should not touch the, the sessions because I think those are community and it's going to be another major issue. So those ones should not touch. Um, mm -hmm. I have no issues with AI, as I said previously, but as it is right now, AI being general, it is too broad. So unless we also have to have a commitment, like when they're saying AI, is it AI ethics, AI and human rights, AI what? But if it just stands as AI, it's going to be very difficult even to structure that main session because AI is a big thing. Yeah, I'm asking. He can, he can respond. Okay. They, they can. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And dropping digital governance? Mm -hmm. No, digital governance should remain. But I still have an issue on uh, I still okay. have an issue on AI on how it's gonna stay. All right. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm for dropping uh, uh, digital uh, governance um, because I think, first of all, I mean, you just said that uh, it's also about not internet, um, internet governance, but digital governance maybe in future. So it's mm -hmm. an overall topic. And on the other side, I mean, uh, on the other hand, I mean, we have GDC. It's so much related. I can understand why Justin proposed to keep it as it is. Uh, uh, but I think that all the digital governance discussions that we are going to have will be very much linked to GDC discussions. So that's why I'm, I'm with uh, Justin and for dropping digital governance. Brina? Um, just one thing about digital governance. First of all, the digital governance discussion we envisioned was not just about GDC. I think GDC deserves its own slot. Um, we all agree that some sort of a space for a broader community discussion on the issues paper and whatever else is gonna become of the summit of the future might be important because we have our proposal. Putting that aside, um, we have agreed like a lot of months ago on a broader session on governance that would address CSTD, WSIS plus 20, ITU, the future of the IGF and the GDC and how all of this process coming together I don't think this is the year for us to drop this discussion. I mean, I can compromise on not talking about gender for next year, but instead of, in order to secure this one, because I really think it's, it's kind of the make it or break it year. Um, the last, this one and the next one, as in kind of a core group of um, a, a time like period for us to discuss this. Um, secondly, I don't think we're ready to commit on these topics. Um, maybe we can leave it, um, we can sleep on it, um, this list, the provisional list that we have right now and see if from today until tomorrow, the AI folks can suggest different approaches to it because in my mind right now, I still have doubts about on, I mean, I have Amrita's suggestion, but it would still be worth like kind of like um, fine tuning what are the AI sessions as well as this, the cybersecurity one, as well as the gender. So we might have some homework to do from today until tomorrow. So just because I, I don't think we're really ready to decide. Yes, please. Say your name again, please. I keep, keep... <laughs> Bram. Bram, yes. <laughs> oh, because it's so close to Bruno. Uh, so, sorry. Yeah, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's just that I'm wondering why I'm getting this lock, gridlock. Yeah, VR. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, mm. No, no, I was going to suggest that I think they, they, we have already agreed um, that AI is, is, it needs to be there. I mean, um, I think the conversation is, is towards that direction. But what we haven't seen, maybe Secretary can help us with uh, the, the sub themes because everyone is saying we can't just say AI. So there are a lot of suggestions, even in the, in the chat room. Can we maybe list them down and then choose from those uh, sort of topics? Mm -hmm. As in so then, for okay, a little bit of order. Thank you. And um, Adam, please make it very, very short. Yeah, because I've been had my flag up for about the last 10 minutes and I will get a flag on for tomorrow. It's fine. I'll move to the front. Um, I just wanted to say that we, we, we ought to not forget aspects of data governance and trust um, uh, and just to think about these issues. I don't think we have to, you know, wed ourselves to these six. It could be eight. We're trying to design interesting main sessions that may amalgamate all different kinds of things. So thank you. And as if, if I am the last person speaking, I would ask you MAG members and others, because it went to the MAG public list, please have a look at the two emails I sent about my favorite word, town halls, which should complete your bingo card for today. So please have a look at town halls. There's two emails, which sort of explains where they are. And just to be controversial, I think we can remove about 40 proposed sessions from the agenda, which is yippee, I think. So I agree with you on the town hall. Some of them are not international. They are not global. And um, even within the country, there are legitimacy issues. And, and I hope the email explains that. And it would be very helpful if, Amrita, you could give a couple of examples and we could go through them. It, it, it's, yeah. And, and then, we, yes, I understand. Thank you. 
Oh, this is yours. Yeah, sorry. See, we have the same color. <laughs> I got you all quiet. Okay, yeah, I think you should break. So, I think, I think there's been a lot of discussion. I think now the time people need to sleep on it and come back tomorrow with the ability to make a decision on how we go forward. Yes. And also, please discuss it amongst yourselves. Yeah. Go for dinner, drinks, or something. Absolutely not. Uh, but <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. so with that, we're adjourned for the evening. <laughs>